Hello, everybody. Welcome back once again to our weekly channel review live stream. I'm Dan, and most of my colleagues are at Vid Summit, but I don't like going outside. So I'm here reviewing your channels. You've been submitting, the forms are down below, by the way. You've been submitting since yesterday, and now we are going to be picking your channels. First, we have some pre selected channels, and then we have a whole bunch of random ones we're going to be choosing. We don't even know what we're going to see when we get to that stage, and we're going to get to as many channels as we can today. You notice I did say we, because even though most of my colleagues went to Vid Summit. There are still a few of us that have the sense to stay home where it's safe. And one of those people is Alexi. How's it going? Yeah. Hi, Dan. Um, thank you for the invite for today's live stream. And uh, yeah, I'm totally with you. I'm one of those people who likes to stay uh, inside my room instead of like <laughs> flying eight hours across the ocean, flying some more across the United States to finally land in Dallas and meet all the cool people. <laughs> I mean, sure, it has its, its cool sides too. But yeah, here I am. My, That's good. I was making own. a lot of assumptions there. I, so I'm glad you also like to stay inside. Uh, <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, let us know by maybe a little raised hand emoji in chat. If you are new to this live stream, is this your first time coming to a vidIQ channel review live stream? And uh, we are going to give you a very brief introduction as to how this works uh, every single week as I vamp a little bit to try and find that tutorial, which is here. Welcome to the vidIQ channel reviews live stream. Simply fill in the correct form in the video description and your channel will be considered for review during a live stream. Channel reviews are free, so no need to send us a super chat and don't spam us in the live chat. We'll ignore it and you may be putting time out. If you need a channel audit right now, make sure to check out the vidIQ coach AI tool that will help you with strategies, ideas, titles, scripts. Link in the description. It's a game changer. If you submit your channel for review, expect the following. We are sharing nothing more than our knowledge, experience and passion as fellow creators. Thank you to all of our moderators who help us out on the live stream every week. You know who you are. Give us a like if you enjoy this live stream, subscribe if you love it and share it with like-minded fellow creators. All right, let's get started. And just like that, we are here on the YouTube home screen where a whole bunch of videos get recommended every single day. Hopefully your video shows up here when you make a thumbnail, when you come up with a title, when you put it out into the world. But if it isn't showing up here, maybe we can help with that. The first channel to submit on one of those forms down below, the non-gaming form, in fact, is Jake's D1. They are a self-proclaimed basketball channel. And I think based on the header here and the videos, we're getting some basketball. I'm seeing basketball. Alexi, what are you seeing? Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing some basketball. I'm seeing, I don't know, maybe college basketball, high school basketball. Um, this is something that I told you before the live stream. I'll say it again out loud for everyone in the chat. Like looking at this channel's thumbnails, I can tell that this is not a big channel, you know? And uh, I don't know, why? Why am I able to tell this? Is it the busy thumbnails, the text on the thumbnails, the lighting in the thumbnails? Something about this channel tells me this is not a big creator. Chat. Help me out. What is this? What, what is this about the channel that is uh, kind of like spoiling the whole thing? Not the biggest creator, but still doing pretty well. 2,000 views here, 2,000 views there, 2,000 views here, 2,000 views there. Even in a community video about them getting their YouTube play button, they're doing fairly well for themselves. And now this is long form videos. Maybe thinking YouTube sending play buttons for people getting 2,000 views a video. Well, they have some excellent. YouTube shorts, their latest short having 24K views alone, which might make you think, well, what's the best short have? That is 10 million views. So look at that. Alexi, when you say the thumbnails don't scream large channel, what what do the shorts tell you? Just the thumbnails that YouTube chose for these. Yeah, uh, I think uh, they are borrowing a little bit uh, of strategy from Mr. Beast. Uh, maybe they are pre-planning certain uh, frames when they're doing their shorts so that when it comes time to selecting uh, the, th the thumbnail for the shorts, they can pick the thing that they like the most. But I'd also say that, you know, shorts is kind of like cheating. I don't know if the chat agrees with me, but shorts <laughs> is nowadays like a cheat code to more views, more subscribers. Uh, you can get it. Again, when you're making shorts, you don't really need the best thumbnails or the best titles. It's like if you have a little bit of talent um, and you can make like an engaging 15 second clip. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say that uh, getting views on shorts is easy. Uh, I know those flatline, we see those all the time. Getting 10 million views is no easy task. It's just that I'm saying when I look at this channel's uh, long-form thumbnails, I can tell that 
nah, it's not those videos that are bringing in the subs and the views. It's something else. And obviously, in this case, it's the shorts. Is shorts cheating? Okay, there's your poll. <laughs> Go ahead, let us know. Uh, is shorts cheating on YouTube? Uh, I can see why you'd say that. So there are a lot of examples here of really high engagement in these shorts. When, when you look at the views, when you look at what they've achieved in shorts, when you look at how many people have managed to subscribe, I'm sure some of you out there who've experimented with shorts have gotten subscribers from YouTube shorts and thought, well, I hope they watch my long form videos. And you're noticing they're not really coming over. Still, getting those subscribers on shorts in the first place, regardless of whether they look at your other stuff, is hard enough. And this channel has been at it for a while. What I'm noticing about their shorts myself is the lighting in these shorts is so much better than the thumbnails in a lot of cases. And that's kind of wild to me because lighting a video, something that's going to be like moving and changing scenes and things like that, is much harder than lighting one picture. You know, that's one frame of content you have to light versus many, many, many frames. So I would love for them to take a step back and try to figure out what they can do with these thumbnails to make them look, you know, amped up a bit. Uh, it's just it's just a skill that they can learn. It's something what I would do to try and get better at this is whatever Photoshop or whatever you use to make thumbnails. Just go and look for some tutorials. But I want you to pick one problem that you've always struggled with in Photoshop. And I want you to Google that problem and try and figure out how to fix it. And I want you to keep picking on different things anytime you run into something in photoshop where you're like what how do you do that i've seen so many people do this effect google it go on youtube search it up and work on figuring out that problem that is how i learned to use premiere after effects photoshop it's because i had like a very very fundamental understanding of it and then i built on it by just solving little problems that i had and that would be my suggestion for this channel to level up their thumbnails so hopefully if we see this channel again in the future, their long form videos start to pick up because I do think you can grow your channel independently of shorts. You're not going to get all 454,000 of these people to watch your long form videos. That's okay. The shorts audience is kind of a different audience and there's no reason not to also get views from them. They're an awesome bunch, but you have to understand when you upload long form videos, it is for a different kind of person who's in a different headspace. I would also recommend, and this might be a Alexa, I don't know if you agree with me, maybe longer videos. Uh, what if they did a challenge and it was like a 10 minute, 15 minute video? with a story built into it. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna split on this one. First of all, I want to address a couple of things going in the chat. Some people say shorts are not cheating. Again, uh, this is a discussion we can have. Uh, some people say, yeah, shorts are a great way to build subs. Others say, well, shorts don't build community. So like, you want subs, but you don't want community. Like, what do you want, what do you want the subs for, all right? Uh, so I, I love the, the discussion going in the chat. So guys, keep them uh, coming. Now to answer your specific question, I would say uh, there are like two strategies I know of uh, that are being discussed right now in the creator space uh, when it comes to like, uh, okay, you got all the subs from shorts. What do you do with the long form content? Some people say, since uh, most of your viewers like shorts, they like shorter long form as well. And this is why, you know, the advice would be, yeah, make short videos. <laughs> This still doesn't mean that your thumbnails uh, should be bad. You still need to put effort into thumbnails and titles, right? But other people say, you know what? Just go the easy route. Like since, uh, again, some people in the chat said uh, shorts are low effort content to some ex to some extent. I agree with that statement, again, to some extent. Uh, what if you just, again, went the same low effort route for your long form content and just combined all of your shorts, all the popular ones, into one long compilation, you know, like 10 minutes or eight minutes for monetization, you know? And uh, that's that that's that's something to try as well. It just depends on the what shorts they are doing. Is it like does it make sense to put them all into a compilation or not? But uh, something to consider. Yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of cool stuff here. I I think we're going to be talking about shorts and longs quite a bit today, just because we do have a pretty good mix of pre-selected channels that that are kind of bo doing both. So we will have more discussions about that coming up. But uh, Jake's, thank you for submitting your channel. Uh, you were the first ones to submit, and uh, we appreciate it. So best of luck. And oh, also, I just noticed something. Do you need this to be the first link people see when they come to your channel, PayPal? I would say that one thing you should be focused on is building a community. And everyone right now especially should be focused on it. This is one thing that will separate us from the machines, in my opinion. Building a community, having a human connection is something that AI channels are going to really struggle with. You as a human channel, not so much if you start to put yourself out there in different places. I don't want you to focus on 100 social media networks or anything like that, but I have to imagine you're in more places than, oh, it's, it is just PayPal. Do you have a, a Twitter, an Instagram, a, you know, a Discord, whatever it might be? 
I don't think seeing a PayPal link here is very welcoming when it could be an opportunity to try and build community. But just my two cents there. Get it? Because it, it's PayPal. No? All right. Well, never mind, Alexi. That's fine. Koi Fish Gaming was the first gaming channel to submit on our gaming forum. And Koi Fish Gaming, as you may know, is a moderator here. So thank you, Koi Fish Gaming. 4,000 subs and doing all kinds of stuff. We got videos, we got shorts, and we got live streams. And Koi Fish, uh, when filling out the form, selected live is like the focus right now for them, uh, which I think is pretty cool. I'm going to kind of focus on this channel, I think, as a whole, because I think these three categories, since you are uploading to all three anyway, feed into each other really nicely. And I think you could have a really awesome growth strategy if you were to kind of focus on all three in different, you know, in varying ways. Um, but before I go on any soapboxes here, Alexi, what, what's like the first thing you notice with this channel? What I'm noticing is that again, I look at this uh, at this channel overall thing, and I'm and if I didn't see the subscriber amount, I would say this is a small channel. Like obviously, if people might argue and, and say, well, four thousand is still small, but I would imagine like seeing this, it could have been like this channel only has four hundred subscribers. You know, just based on the designs, based on the channel focus. Uh, why do I say this? Like right now, I'm curious where are the subscribers coming from. Like, what did this channel do in the past? Uh, to get all the subscribers. Is it again coming from shorts? I see some 25,000, 21,000 views on shorts. Are there any long form videos that are doing oh. anything? Oh, wow, look at this 10 months ago. See, that, like that that's interesting. So this channel has a 300,000 views video uh, and then a couple of uh, 10K, 20K, 30K, right? Uh, and right now, if you go to the latest, like what's the performance of those videos uh, in the moment? 45 views, 30 views, 37. Like what, what went wrong? Like w w something went wrong with the channel. Chat, what's, what went wrong with this channel? Why are they able to get, 10 months ago, they were able to get 300,000, uh, sorry, views, not subscribers. 300,000 views, 10 months ago, now they're getting 34 views on the video. How is this possible? It's a good question. And uh, one thing I also want to say, because it's Nintendo especially, but in any case, uploading a full, I assume OST stands for original soundtrack, just uploading full original soundtracks is a really good way to get your, at least that video demonetized. And if not, eventually with enough like strikes and stuff, your whole channel. So I would warn against this sort of thing, uh, regardless of what you hear, what you see other people doing. Um, I, I get why this video has so many views because if people really like this soundtrack, they are listening, you know, for this, they may be subscribing, hoping for more soundtracks, but it has nothing to do with you, your personality, what you're putting into your channel. That's that's another that's another issue as well. But of course, it is just kind of taking somebody's work and just putting it on your channel. Um, and it is relevant because you cover a lot of retro games. But it's even though it's relevant, it doesn't mean it's relevant in the case of like trying to build a community around you and your brand. So that would just be my caution there. Uh, it's cool, like this video here, like apparently like a live reaction. Uh, that that's doing very well. Like. 39 seconds and a lot of people resonate with a lot of people. It seems like Cuphead in general was something that at the time was working for you really well. I'm actually surprised only a year ago because Cuphead's kind of old now. Maybe maybe there was an update. I don't, I don't really follow Cuphead too much, but uh, there could be a sequel or an update. It's just surprising that as, as recently as a year ago, you were getting like 10,000 views in some of these. But also, yeah, also go ahead. I'm picking up some some good insights from the chat here. Like people are saying, first of all, uh, the videos they're making are no longer about a trend, you know, which is quite possible. Uh, there are some voices here. People say that it's no longer the same topic, like they shifted to another niche, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's quite problematic. If the trend stops, the views stop. You shift to another niche, which is less trending and popular, the views stop. Um, what else? Thumbnails are too busy for me, says one person. Apocalyptic retrospective. Especially That's interesting. I, I, I that. agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. Thumbnails are too busy. And I know we, we need to talk about their live streams and stuff like that too. But uh, I, I just I just want to say like when I look at the Cuphead videos, I see a lot of value in these. <laughs> um, one sec, this is what I have to deal with every day, the, just climbing all over everything. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of wrong buttons being clicked. The value in these videos is very apparent to me. Uh, Pre DLC patch, so you're talking about updates coming out 
uh, you know, easy to hard ranking all 40 cuphead bosses expert. That's fun. That's just fun content. Like when people like a tier list, you know what I mean? People love a ranking system of some kind. So I think you were doing some really cool stuff when you were kind of focused on cuphead and the latest stuff you're doing. I can see the retro game aspect being like the through line, right? It's just, it's retro gaming, but we're still not doing anything that is like clear to a new viewer. Cause I see party animals and I see what looks like a marketing image from the game. Not, not an image that you took as a screenshot of something interesting happening. It's just like an image that they put out there in a press kit and that became a thumbnail. And so, so there's not like a lot of reason to click this. It just looks like an ad for party animals and then party animals, tutorial, first impressions. That's kind of low hanging fruit when it comes to a new game like this. And it's going to be very, very quick for other people to jump on that and for you to have to really compete heavily when, you know, the, one of the things they said is they're focused on co-op gaming. You and your co-op companions could be doing something interesting. What if what if you tried to do some kind of like fun, quick challenge? You know, I'm surely between the two of you, you could come up with something that is like really unique, you know, with this game that is very new and, and trending and, and all that. So I would really be thinking like outside the realm of like, oh, I'll just get my first impressions on this new thing just to jump on it and, and take a step back. You're uploading very frequently. What if you gave yourself a couple weeks to kind of come up with something a little more thought out and unique and try that on the channel? And the reason I'm focused so hard on the videos when they said they wanted to do live streams is because live streams do not grow your channel on their own. There's a very specific thing you can do to get a live stream VOD to help grow. And that is to take on a challenge and, and again, make that live stream something that's like worth clicking on after it's over. That's hard to do. You know, it's still, it still was a live stream. It still was for a certain type of audience. It's difficult to get people to a new viewer to watch an old live stream and then subscribe to your channel. That's what videos are for. That's what shorts are for. Your live streams are mostly for the people who've already subscribed and you should still be going out of your way to create compelling thumbnails and interesting challenges and plans for those streams. Uh, some of the biggest live streamers on Twitch and YouTube take time between live streams to plan out their next live stream. They think about like, what can I do if I'm going to live stream for four hours? What am I going to do in that time? Like I, I want every hour planned out. I want every half hour planned out. I want to have like a plan through and through and through. And so I'm going to try this challenge. I'm going to take some time to talk to my audience, maybe react to some gaming news stories. Since like you're covering retro games, F099 is new. Maybe you could talk about people who are like, enjoying it people who don't like it like you can really plan out a live stream cover to cover and then that'll create really compelling clips maybe even videos you could take sections the pre-planned sections of live streams turn them into standalone videos there's a lot you can do but don't take live streams for granted like plan them out and then put compelling titles and thumbnails on those don't just say f099 let's get into it yeah, what are you are you trying to beat a high score at least? Is there something how many times can I get for every time I lose an F099, I have to eat a hot pepper? Like give give us something, you know what I mean? Like, because that's what you're competing against. The biggest streamers on the platforms are still doing that stuff. Like, even though they don't need to, they're the ones that can have it easy. And they still set up those types of live streams that have really interesting challenges and things like that. So that is also very important. It's all important. And I would pick one thing and try and like figure that out first. And kind of build slowly. Is it thumbnails for you? Do you want to get better at those? Is it coming up with interesting stories and challenges? And then work on that for a bit. You don't have to do this every single day. You can take a step back though. And and build something really, really cool. I'm spinning I mean, out, Alexi. I'm spinning out. There's that's that's all good, Dan. Uh, the thing is, what, what you're saying is resonating with the people in the chat. I'm, 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 I'm seeing some people, first of all, are thankful for the fact that you're pointing out live streams don't grow a channel by itself, you know, alone. Uh, however, there's also other, uh, a contrary opinion. Um, someone said, "Well, I do live stream all the time. That's the only thing I'm doing, and I'm and I and I got like 1,000 subscribers just through that, right?" That's great. But then another yeah. person pointed out, "Well, but if you look at the big uh, streamers, even on, on Twitch, etc., they are all chopping up their uh, the live streams, you know, into clips, posting on YouTube." Mm -hmm. so, but mm -hmm. that's a slightly different story because I'm gonna I, I gonna, I'm gonna be honest with everyone. Twitch is not a great uh, platform for discoverability. Twitch is a platform that you go on when you already have an audience elsewhere. You know, yeah. with YouTube, it's a little bit different. Like YouTube has better discovery algorithms. So I guess uh, the user who said, "Well, I, I grew a live stream to thousand subscribers just by sorry, I grew a channel to thousand subscribers just doing live streams." I, I, I believe that. You know, I believe that because YouTube is able to promote your live streams. 
like through YouTube uh, homepage, people can find it through search, etc. But I think we spent too much time, to be honest, on this channel already. I say we move on. And we already look I, I was just going to give one example real quick for those live streamers out there. This is my favorite live stream creator right now. I'm sure you've heard of them. And these are all live streams from Twitch. All of them. Chopped up into 24-minute videos. Sometimes 41-minute videos. Hour of the long videos. But they're all heavily edited. And this is Doug's strategy for growing. Is to take something and repurpose it. But but if you watch these, they are not set up like a live stream anymore. Because they're not slow at all. They, they take hours worth of content and cram it into just a really small digestible video for a different audience. So... It all it can all cycle and grow in different ways, and all of that content has very compelling titles, thumbnails, things like that. So there's multiple ways to do this, is all I'm trying to say. And if you look towards the biggest streamers out there, they're not complacent either. They're not just saying, today we're playing Skyrim. It's Skyrim, but something is going to happen every few seconds. And that now it's a challenge video. Now it's a party. We will move on, though. To the next yeah, channel. let's move on. Let's move on. I have to disagree with the chat here. Like uh, when they say YouTube has a terrible discoverability system, like that's just not true. I would say YouTube is probably one of the most uh, fair platforms out there. Mm -hmm. Now I, I know like people will say, well, but on TikTok, you know, I upload my my short to TikTok, I get a million views. I upload my short to YouTube shorts, it gets 20,000 views, 1,000 views, or it doesn't get any views. Like they will bring other platforms. But I would in generally say that YouTube right now it's probably one of the best platforms to kind of like discover your audience still to this day. Like it's, it it's really it, the best. I know that's really frustrating to hear for some of you because you come to these live streams trying to figure out maybe like the secret to growing, like these guys might know something. And we are going to kind of give it to you straight. There is in most cases, 99.9% .9 of cases, whatever you think is going wrong with your channel, it's not YouTube's fault. And I know you don't want to hear that it's your fault. Maybe fault is the wrong word to use. It could be just a lack of experience. You know, you're still getting better at different aspects of this, but it does come down to what you're doing at the end of the day, you know? So yes, it can feel like YouTube doesn't have a good discovery algorithm because you've been at this for a while and you're not getting anywhere, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the case. It's just, it just takes a lot. It's a lot. That's why these live streams are so big now because people are like, what do I need to do? And it's apparently a lot of things. It's not, there's no one thing we can sit here and tell you, even if your channel comes up, I can sit here until I'm blue in the face telling you certain things. And I could still miss stuff because there's so many things that you need to be good at on YouTube to grow a channel. You need to be good at marketing. You need to be good at graphic design. You need to be good at video editing. You need to be good at storytelling. It's not when it when people are like, oh, oh, well, Doug Doug's big because of luck. Like, geez, no, he's been working really hard. And if you look at his first videos, they they kind of suck. They're 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 low energy and they're not there's not a lot of thought put into them. And then as you watch like the later stuff, he's working on it. You can see any YouTuber like and they're at the beginning of their journey and how far they've come. And they're happy to leave that old content out there for that very purpose, so people can see how far they've come. So I know it can be frustrating to have us sit here and go, YouTube has great discovery and you're wrong. But we believe that because we kind of we've been through it. I don't know about you, Lexi. I learned the hard way. I went years just pedaling and getting nowhere and thinking, well, I'm good at editing. And I was decent. But that's it. That's all I knew. That's it. That was the only skill I had. And I thought that was going to be enough to carry me. And it, it wasn't anywhere close. I had no concept of how to market my videos to an audience. And when people told me, well, why would I watch this? I took it as an insult because I made it because I like it. Like, you should like it, too. No, why should I watch this? Like, what did you do that's different? Because all you said was Minecraft episode 12. Okay, what happens in Minecraft episode? Who cares? That's what I did. That I don't want you to make those mistakes. So anyway, I went on a whole different soapbox there. We were supposed to go to this channel. <laughs> uh, this channel is really interesting to me. I picked this channel because they are having Luigi sing AI covers of different songs, which... Right now, that's that kind of thing's on trend, using AI to create something interesting. And I thought we could give them some advice. I, I thought, yes, very interesting concept for a channel. Thumbnails are visually very like nice. I can read what's going on. I can see what's going on. Backgrounds are are not over like over encumbering the image with pixels. It it looks, yeah, I'm I I get the gist. Um, but there are a few things I think this channel could improve upon. Um, but I'm gonna turn it to you because I've talked a lot. Oh well, uh can we click on the about section just to see when the channel got started? So yeah, it's July 23. Uh, so 
a couple of months ago, which is uh, cool, you know, a fresh channel. Um, I mean, what can I say? They are so, sort of certainly leveraging AI here, but only sticking to the uh, one character. Is it because they only have access to that one voice? I mean, I don't know, Chad, would you make a AI sing songs and, and just focus on one character? I feel like right now this channel uploaded, what, 12 videos? Uh, would you say this is like good performance for the amount of time they've been on YouTube or would you expect a little bit more views here? Personally, I would say this is good performance uh, for just a, a handful of videos. Now, they have another channel that's linked here, so this is not their first YouTube rodeo. Mm -hmm. That That is in their corner. And again, like that just speaks to what we were saying a little while ago with discoverability on YouTube. If you have some of these skills already, you can find that a new channel grows a lot faster than the first time around because you've taken what you've learned and applied it to something new. Um, but yeah, I was that for chatter for me because I, I answered that. <laughs> I, yeah, I feel like it's time to introduce new characters, new per, uh, new voices, you know, Let's, uh, try something new. I feel like when you do something AI uh, related uh, in this day and age, you are aiming for like, I mean, sure, this channel has 1,000 views here in the video. So, but, you know, 2,000, 5,000 views. Like if this doesn't take off relatively quickly within a couple of months i would just try new stuff i feel like this channel is pigeonholing themselves right now you know like oh this was a this is my idea luigi sing songs and this is i'm gonna just power through this i feel like you know try more stuff more characters more voices i, I yeah. see some suggestions from the chat like nintendo sings yeah like introduce all the characters from nintendo you know again yeah. there might be tech limitations maybe they don't have access to all the voices but uh that would be my advice just not knowing the the background that, that is, yes, that is good advice. And then what I wanted to say when I picked this channel was your thumbnails are kind of just telling me the title, like almost. The only thing that's kind of missing for me is the song that, that Luigi's singing in that particular video, but AI Arrow Luigi, every single thumbnail. AI Arrow Luigi. You've tried this for 12 videos. And at a certain point, I would be like, okay, this, this thumbnail strategy only got me so far. I would be thinking about pitching it a different way because it's very obvious if you're going to say luigi is singing a song that i've heard before it's very obvious that that's ai given the time that we currently reside in right like if i see luigi is singing a taylor swift song my mind's going to go oh they're using ai to make luigi sing a taylor swift song you don't have to point out that obvious thing you know i would be trying to come up with a more creative thumbnail because what's missing in all of these most of the time is the actual like song. I get like the reference to Frozen because the castle's kind of back there, but <clears throat> you slap the AI thing on it, so it's kind of hard to tell. And then Nyan Cat, I guess a little bit, but could could Nyan Cat been the star because you've covered the cat's face? That's still part of the icon, right? The very iconic Nyan Cat, you know. And it, it's you're you're missing like that big part of like. What, why this is unique. It's Luigi singing a specific song, but that song is sometimes really difficult to suss out just by looking at the thumbnail. So I would be trying a new thumbnail strategy and I would be trying different characters, especially if a new game is coming out with a specific character. I know Luigi's Mansion is getting a remake soon. So I'm not saying Luigi's a dead end, but there's other opportunities as well. Hey, I'm, I'm reading the chat and I totally agree right now with the, what is being said there. First of all, some people are pointing out that this again they are implying this channel is a little bit lazy because they could have uploaded a lot more videos like to make these videos apparently doesn't take too much time for uh, then the other point was also most of the voices if not all of the voices are available you know to people so like this whole luigi restriction is also not an argument and there was a cool thumbnail idea too like um high up in someone's I, again the names i'm not going to pronounce the names chat sorry chat they're sometimes way too long uh mm. but someone suggested for a thumbnail uh, what if Luigi had a speech bubble next to him with the name of the song and some musical notes around it to kind of portray? Oh, yeah. I, I think that's a lot, that's much better than AI arrow pointing to Luigi and being repetitive. I think that conveys the message a lot better. Yeah. But before we get on them for being lazy, like I just want to say one thing: <laughs> running in multiple channels is not easy, and they have this whole animation channel here that they're running as well, which we're not reviewing. They didn't ask us to review this, but it's here. You know, so. Let's let's just make sure that we're keeping it into perspective. <laughs> They're trying something different, and they want to know how they can change it. But all right, cool. Yeah, I mean, of course, like different people. Again, I, I know we need to be mindful of people's time, etc. But uh, I don't know. Then, would you start a new channel 
if you're like super focused on your first one? Like, would you run two channels at the same time? Is that a good idea? I, I've tried that. And the only times it's been successful is when I create a different definition of success. And it's because I want to try some, I'm, I want to do an experiment and it's part of some larger thing I want to play with. I don't, I, I don't want to run two channels that have their own separate audiences and themes and, and long-term strategies. If I'm going to start multiple channels, it's because, Hey, I just have this like curiosity. I want to try something for a minute, but yeah, I think it's way, way more impactful on YouTube to just focus on one thing, which can be hard to do when you have a lot of interests, but that is like a key to success is start small because until you're a full-time creator, you got other stuff going on. You might have school, you have a job, you got just family and life in general, which everyone has to deal with. And so you have those extra responsibilities keeping you from having one successful channel, much less two. So let's figure out one channel first. And this isn't for uh, Luigi sayings. This is like, I'm just saying for anybody, like if you're thinking of two channels, which is advice we give, it's only under those cases where you actually have the time to do it. Most of the time we would say, yeah, you could do two channels, but what if you just did one? Before you move on to the next one, and we should move on to the next one, uh, one question, which I think is very interesting. A channel like that, using a Nintendo character, using a, a voice cloned from Nintendo, yep, <laughs> uh, singing popular songs. It's like the <laughs> trifecta, if not the, yeah. a quartet of copyright infringement from yeah. all... <laughs> Does this channel get Quartet. monetized? Is it? <laughs> Quartet is of possible? copyright infringement is the best thing I've ever heard. Um, that, yes, uh, that channel is playing with fire. Uh, it, it's a lot of risks. Uh, if you get three strikes on YouTube, that's that's it. Goodbye channel. Um, I don't know how the rules work, but if you have multiple channels, especially if they're tied together, that I don't know if there's an in, uh, impact there. I wouldn't want to risk it. So hope you're having fun. Uh, but be ready for a hammer to drop from the sky. Nintendo will come at people if they're well within the the fair use bounds, but they just happen to mod their Nintendo Switch and play a modded game. Yet they're doing everything every other Nintendo creator is doing. They're playing the game. They're coming up with unique titles, thumbnails, concepts. They are adding their voice to it. Nintendo doesn't care. There's they They are very protective of their IP. And... That is, I know that can make people angry. <laughs> like, what the heck? I'm not I'm hurting anybody. But Nintendo disagrees. And that's the thing about gaming in general is like at any point, like we saw what Minecraft did to the Minecraft creators and stuff. At any point, the person who owns that IP could go, I don't like this anymore. And that's it. You know? I want to get to the super kill chats. switch is what they have. You know? Yeah. We have... I feel like... Uh, I. I know this is, sorry, I know okay. this is uh, always answered in the chat, but I constantly see questions like, when do I get audited? How do I re how do you review my channel? And we will randomly select channels in a few minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Right now we have the pre-selected section. We'll, we'll move on to the random selection where everyone gets a chance. So stay tuned. Forms are down below if you want your channel randomly selected. Uh, old man Gibb has, has been here for four months. Unfortunately, we can't see our cool emotes for our members, but they are there. <laughs> uh, that is one of our members' emotes that has been put in there a few times. So go ahead and, and leave some vidIQ bras for uh, old man Gibb, who's been a member for a bit. And thank you, old man Gibb. Daniel uh, GD gave us a pound. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Asan Karate uh, became a YouTube member. Thank you very much. Ghost Prodigy says, why is it that 50 uh, that at 50 subs, I was getting an average of 1,500 views per video. Now at 500 subs, uh, how do they go backwards? I get 300 average when all I've done is improve the quality. Wait, whoa, okay, whoa, 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 sorry. I saw 1,500 and I thought it was subs. I got really confused because numbers are my brain. Okay, so at 50 subs, you were getting more views. At 500 subs, you're getting less views. And you feel like you've improved the quality. What's going on? I think this is a good question. It's a good question, but it's a trick question. It's like, <laughs> I improved my quality, and and we have to believe you because you said it in, in, in the message. I don't know. I, I I could ask the chat, chat, can you check out the channel real quick, Ghost Prodigy, and, and tell if the quality is really... Like, there is no way for us to tell this, right? And I, and I, and I doubt anyone can tell it within a reasonable amount of time. So uh, I don't know. I don't feel like getting into this, oh, my quality is better, but my views are less. And I have more subs. Like I, I don't know. I don't think your quality is better if you are not getting the, the, the or maybe you're not playing the game that got the views or the, the, you, you switch topics. There are so many 
minor details that play a role yeah. in getting views, right? So yeah. quality is important and maybe um, the quality is just not as good. Or maybe you did improve the quality, but the topics, the ideas are boring. You know, like our quality on the VidIQ channel is decent, but not every mm -hmm. video goes viral because sometimes the topics just don't hit. What What is your definition of quality would be my question back to them because you can improve the quality of your editing, the quality of your thumbnails. What about the quality of your ideas? As Alexi was alluding to, that the topic of your video matters quite a bit. And if you haven't been focused on the quality across the board, not just editing, but like the actual physical idea, yeah, you will get less views. There's no point in this journey in which you can become complacent. That's why YouTube is so difficult because you could see that you're getting some decent views and you can go, all right, I'm going to focus on like this other aspect for a bit. You still got to still bring the other stuff too. You have to, everything has to improve together, you know? So if your ideas are not resonating with your audience, those views are that signal that's telling you, oh shoot, like whatever I'm doing here didn't work. And YouTube, when a video doesn't perform as well, they tell you, they tell you what's going on. They give you clues. And it's your job to think to yourself, like, maybe this algorithm that's telling me I'm doing something wrong is right. Maybe I have to, like, think about why people aren't watching this video. Again, be careful not to blame YouTube here. It's, and maybe it's nobody's fault. You tried something new and it didn't work. That's okay. Learn from it and and try to figure out what you can do going forward to get your views back up. But don't worry about the trend line. Like, tomorrow you could post a video and get a million views. It has nothing to do with how many subs you have focus on improving the quality across the board and take any losses in views in stride and I'll learn from them. I'm going to, before we move to the next one, we can't, actually we can, but I'll still make my point. There is this creator out there, maybe the chat knows, his name is Dotford and he's making like documentaries about famous people, you know, actors and stuff like that. When you check his quality, it's amazing. It's like a Netflix level style documentary editing it's and narration, right? Does every single view, uh, video on his channel get 1 million views? Because he has a couple of videos that hit 1 million views. No. He had a video recently which was reasonably well produced, had a great thumbnail, and it was like he, one of the worst performing videos on the channel, which kind of, I, I felt like he, he felt a little bit disappointed with the performance, right? So again, like Dan said, sometimes it's not the quality. Sometimes it's the quality of ideas. And another mistake people do is they think that effort equals quality. Like you can spend five hours editing subtitles manually to a video and you're like tweaking the color of those subtitles and you uh, feel like wow a comma needs to be here and a dot there and you're putting all the effort but it's not the place where you should be putting the effort in you know maybe yeah. you should have spent that time designing a less busy thumbnail a thumbnail like some of the people pointed out uh, earlier that you know some thumbnails are just busy too busy so there are so many angles where you can kind of like improve things or you know the quality argument for me is just uh yeah it's a poor excuse is what i'm saying uh dr iggy says i need subscribers well thank you for the super very much and uh be sure you're taking some notes because everything we're saying we hope is relevant to everybody gaming demon 666 oh boy uh i stream games a lot and sometimes i do giveaways my giveaways get me more views than my normal videos and slash streams but i don't make profit making it hard to do more giveaways any tips stop doing giveaways that's my tip. Um, yeah, I think earlier we had a little bit of a discussion like is shorts uh, cheating? Uh, if we were to make a tier list, like what's really cheating, giveaways would be at the very top. I mean, okay, we are not talking about like uh, shady stuff, you know, like buying subscribers, buying views. That's that's the ultimate definition of cheating. But doing giveaways just because you feel like, wow, you know, people will subscribe, like my videos more. This just doesn't work. It worked 10 years ago. I, but we're not living in those years anymore. So yeah, I tried ten years ago, and guess guess who subscribed to my channel? Everyone who wanted to win the thing. Guess who watched after the giveaway was over? None of them. None of them. They hey, free thing. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll subscribe. Whatever gets me the free free thing, please, please, please. free thing. Oh, and free by thing. the way, I'm I'm saying uh, two years ago it worked. I'm not saying that two years ago you were giving a giveaway and you were gaining a loyal audience because of the giveaway. 10 yeah. years ago, you were giving a giveaway, people were liking, they were forced to like and comment because that was the condition to enter the giveaway. Yes. And the YouTube algorithm prioritized those signals, you know? And all of a sudden you had all those videos on your YouTube homepage, giveaway, 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 you know? Uh, yeah. And YouTube obviously fixed that exploit at some point, so. Don't be the person that's known for giveaways. If you wanna do a giveaway, which I would encourage, I would encourage it under one specific circumstance. 
you do the giveaway without making the title or the thumbnail indicate there's a giveaway. You're doing it for the people who already want to watch your content and you're giving it to them as a thank you. It's and building yet more loyal community, you know, fandom around you because they're like, oh wow, they didn't have to do that. That's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting a giveaway. I clicked on the video, boom, giveaway. Like the biggest YouTubers add giveaways to their videos sometimes, but note they are not putting that in the title or the thumbnail they don't want people to just watch the content because there's a giveaway in it that's going to send the view video to the wrong people you should still want to get a very specific type of audience watching your content and it shouldn't be people who just want free stuff so giveaways yes it's tempting to keep doing them it's also when people try the youtube promotion thing and they put money behind their video and it gets a bunch of views it's tempting to keep doing that because now you're used to a certain level of views but you're not getting anybody real who wants to see you for you and come, they're not going to come back, you know? So yes, you can put money behind this, but those are not where if you're spending money, that's not where it should be spent. I mean, we have coaching programs. We have VidIQ max, the links down below. We'll tell you where to spend your money. And we're actually going to leave you with advice give you the tools you need to grow on YouTube. So you don't have to keep shelling out money for giveaways. So that's my advice. You know, I love the chat because they're saying, you know, who was successful with a giveaway? Mr. Beast. And that's a fair point, but we're talking about different kinds of giveaways. Like yeah. Mr. Yeah. Beast was giving, a, uh, giving away money and filming and it. And that was the content. content. That was the yes. content. The content yeah. wasn't watch this video for a giveaway. It was, see that guy? I'm going to give him a mountain of cash. Like that was a video concept. That's not the same thing. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Sam D, a new member. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Goat Daddy and the Fam. I've gained 1,300 subscribers in just over three months. Is that decent growth? 1,000 subscribers a month is really decent. Yeah, I would say it's decent if it's not shorts. I mean, <laughs> I mean, listen again. Wow. If it's shorts, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's it, yeah, it can grow quickly. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, congrats. That's awesome. And Shrimply Canadian, before we get back to more channel reviews, says 100% of the titles for my long form videos have been from Vidicu's AI coach, and the results have been incredible. Love to hear that. Thank you. Yeah. I, I say if you're not using AI to help you somewhat with your titles, descriptions, something, you're missing out. You can try these tools for free, by the way. Um, you guys are just just teeing me up here for adverts. I love it. Uh, you can try these tools for free by checking out vidIQ.com. Go to AI tools and you can try the YouTube title generator. And you can do this a handful of times before you're asked to even sign up for an account. So, you know, play with it. See if this is something you uh, can get some benefits from. All right. Let's get back to checking out some channels. We have more Super Chats. We will get back to them. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for being here. Let's jump into the next channel. Alexa, you picked this one. I'm very excited to talk about it. I don't think this will be the last time we see it today because this is going to be what I call a fantastic, a fantastic channel, channel to channel use as an example. Use as an example. An example. Did you hear that or was for, it too echoey? Was it? <laughs> yes. Uh, for a sec, I, I thought that was the echo that my thing was producing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, just for a reference chat, uh, Dan told me before the stream that my audio was echoing slightly or my setup. So anyways, um, a, a, a quick scare there. But yeah, I picked this channel uh, for one uh, reason. Uh, this channel is doing amazing in terms of like views to subscribers. It has like, what, 12,000 uh, subs. Uh, but the yeah. latest, the latest video has 35 K. If we check the most popular video on this channel, you'll see the numbers are even bigger, like 800,000, 500,000. Uh, what I also see before we kind of move on, check out this valve, uh, thumbnail from this channel. Like they're not afraid to just literally do the <laughs> same thing twice. And they're yep. getting the same amount of views, almost like 160 on one hundred and something on, on, on the other. So, uh, yeah, just uh, like this example by itself just goes to show that you think every video you post, everyone has watched it and there's no way you can like remake it, et cetera, because people will get bored. Well, guess what? That's not how YouTube works. Very few people get to see all your videos. Probably like even your most loyal subscribers. I don't know. how. Nah, I, I think our loyal subscribers definitely almost watch like a lot of videos. Uh, but like what I'm saying is some subscribers will only watch like two videos from your channel in a in a quarter, you know, yeah. and that's it. So uh, feel free to like redo ideas that you think are worth uh, redoing. Uh, but also in general, why does this channel is crushing? I, I mean, uh, Chad, feel free to help me out here. Uh, I can give you a hint. Obviously it's about Oculus Quest. It's about VR. It's about 
This other thing, which is called uh, full dive virtual reality, I actually had to Google that uh, to understand what it means. I mean, full dive VR sort of suggests what it is, but basically imagine you're like, there are animes out there where the main character is using VR to become part of the game, so to speak. Mm. And I guess this this thing is also coming to the real world now, where you can play a game, and while you're playing the game, you feel like, wow, I'm actually inside that field. You know, I'm actually riding a horse. I'm actually, I don't know, I'm actually shooting a ball or throwing, you know, whatever. So uh, yeah, this uh, full dive VR is coming. Those, the gist of it is, bottom line, this channel is talking about trending topics, trending technology, and everything that's surrounding it. So games for VR. Uh, new VR developments, uh, new VR gadgets. And when you start talking about a topic that's new, that's hot, that's trending, the views are easy. So I guess that's also cheating. But in my tier list of cheating, I would say this is like, you know, not definitely not A tier or B tier. This is like D tier. Like this is the right way to cheat on YouTube, you know, to jump on <laughs> trends and uh, profit basically is what the channel is doing. It's... Amazing. Like what I love about this channel the most is the thumbnails tell me what I'm going to get in the video. And again, like this is something I've been trying to explain for a while now. So this is why I say it's a good channel for an example, because when I see the thumbnail, the latest video, it says the word finally. And as someone who understands VR, I understand they're talking about full body motion tracking without reading the title because the the lines and the dots, it's just kind of like a ubiquitous. Like I, I just get it instantly light bulb goes off and the word finally tells me that something has happened in the vr space that has made this person like really excited and me as well like i would love full body tracking that's so cool and sure enough the title backs up my assumption quest 3 i will have full body tracking here's everything you i assume need to know or everything you missed so they're wearing the headset they made sure those white lines and green dots were nice and vibrant the fire I think it just makes the thumbnail stand out a little bit. It doesn't need to be there, but I think it kind of helped. And then the word finally, like it's everything you need. Nice packaging on this video. And every thumbnail starts to tell a story and the title finishes that story or backs it up in some way that wins the click. And so these are the types of things I want you to think about. Like when we say, for example, simplifier thumbnails, sometimes we're talking about the amount of elements. Like this is obviously about meta. I see that logo and I see the Terminator and then I see a headset. So I'm already thinking like meta and, and negativity. Like, okay, they did something. Something's like with VR is upsetting the VR community. Why the Quest 3 will destroy Apple's Vision Pro. And it's not probably, it's not what you think. Oh, and it's not the price. Okay. So they have like a very specific opinion about these two very popular headsets in terms of media coverage. I don't know how popular the Apple one's going to be, but be that as it may. It's, again, like using these simple images. That's only three elements or four elements, maybe. It's the Terminator, the headset on the Terminator, the meta logo in the back, and then fire. That's it. It's a very simple thumbnail done really well. Like using other skills, it, they made it look like it has a lot of depth and, and, and looks really nice. And that comes with practice. But yeah, I want you to like think about thumbnails like this when you're considering your content. Like how can I take this idea that I'm trying to communicate? And what if I could only communicate it using the thumbnail? What if there were no titles on YouTube? That is one way to look at thumbnails. Another way to look at thumbnails and titles together is that one can flow into the other and they can kind of build a story together. So there's just different ways you can approach YouTube thumbnails. I think this channel is doing a really good job of getting the message across without needing to read the title first. Yeah, I agree. Uh, thumbnails are great. Uh, I want to ask the chat here. Obviously, thumbnails is, is a great point here and you can learn something from here. Uh, but another thing you should learn is that it's a trending topic. And so, chat, tell me what's trending in your niche. You know, like I want to hear from the chat what niche are you in and what's trending right now in your niche. And if you tell me nothing is trending, then I think you don't know your niche uh, too well. That's a good point. If you feel like there's no trends, I mean, maybe maybe you're not looking for them, or maybe you're in a niche that isn't going to grow. If there's no trends and no one's talking about it, no one's excited about what you're covering, that makes it difficult to grow on YouTube. The ceiling might be really low for your content. So it's it's one of those two things, in my opinion. Um, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to pick some of these out. 
Paranormal, debunking the paranormal. Seven Days to Die in its new update. New updates are always great. Uh, new drones, kind of expensive to keep reviewing. Good point. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this this channel has to face that too. They're they're getting into some really interesting like VR instruments, and that stuff can be very expensive. Uh, but those investments can pay off. You can also you can talk about things without actually having them in hand too. There there are plenty of creators who have tech channels that do that. So yeah, this is great that some of you actually have like a really good grasp on, you know, what's trending in your space. Shall we move on? Definitely, yeah. Let's All move right. on. Next channel is from our Facebook group. Every so often, our community manager, Victoria, will throw something in the Facebook group for you guys to uh, comment on, and the best one will get a channel review. And this time, it was YouTube's golden rule, but wrong answers only. So the winner, we actually had two winners, but we only have one of their channels. Uh, so if you do uh, enter these, make sure you're paying attention. We try and get your channel link from you so that we can review your channel. And if we miss, if you know, we miss you, then uh, we can't review your channel. Uh, number one, give up if your first video has less than a million views in four hours. There's no point. Obviously, no one likes your content. <laughs> you said wrong answers. Two, if you get canceled, be sure to make an apology video and name it. Hi, we need to talk or I'm sorry. And if possible, use a musical instrument. Ukulele, highly recommended, great track record or interpretive dance. Question for the chat. Do you get the reference? What video is this person referencing uh, in this thing? The ukulele? Uh, and uh, the apology video. Let me know. That's how I know if you're paying attention to what's going on on YouTube. <laughs> Their channel is called Rich the Poor. And we have... Oh, maybe they work together on this. Maybe that... I don't know. Anyway, uh, Rich the Poor has 429 subscribers. They are playing Baldur's Gate. They're playing Starfield. They are doing various challenges. There's a lot going on on this channel. Uh, it's pretty cool. So... Let's look at their most popular videos first. And we see they have a few videos here. Uh, I made my girlfriend play Elden Ring. I made my girlfriend play Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, Ruining Starfield as an annoying old man. I don't know what this one is, but it did pretty well. Um, I accidentally went live on my girlfriend's Twitch stream. So I'm sensing a lot of challenge content when I see titles and thumbnails like this. It's, I'm going to play Starfield. I'm going to play Baldur's Gate, but I'm I'm going to put a spin on it every time. I'm not just going to say... Today we're playing Baldur's Gate and play Baldur's Gate. It has to have some kind of twist to it, which is great in the gaming space. That's fantastic. They also have shorts. And these are, for me, like I did watch a couple of these. They're very clearly like clips from live streams that are being repurposed into shorts, which is good. I feel like everyone should be doing that, especially with a face cam. So it, it kind of feels like there's like some dynamicness to the short. Um, but what I will say is I watched this one and the first second or two is silence. Uh, there's some there's some like music and you hear the water in the background, but they're not talking. And this is, I would say, if just to get some shorts advice real quick, a big, big, big mistake when taking your content and trying to repurpose it. Because when I don't hear anything, when I get when I scroll to your short and I get no context for what's happening, and there's two screens to look at, by the way, there's them and there's the game. I'm very, very likely to swipe away because I'm not getting an indication that anything is going to happen because there are, unfortunately, a lot of shorts out there where nothing happens, you know, and people don't want to sit and waste any time at all when they're on shorts trying to see if maybe this person's short pays off for them. So instead, I encourage you to take a page out of, I'll say Point Crow's book. That's just one creator out of very many that do this. Point Crow, one word, go to their channel, it's a common spelling. And you'll see that when they do a short that's a clip from a live stream, they start by looking directly at the camera and they tell a story. And they're telling that story to the YouTube audience. This was not filmed during the live stream. This is something they filmed after the live stream is over. They're like, I'm going to make a short. First, I'm going to introduce the short. I'm going to set it up. And they give context for what's about to happen. But because this short doesn't start with any context at all, I'm very, very, very likely to swipe away before I get to the funny part, which it is funny. So, like, their companion that they're with jumps in the water with them and they get lost. And no spoiler alert, they they don't come back up. So, it's a funny moment that happened. It's, like, worth clipping, but I didn't get anything. But if they had, like, sat there and said, I was playing Starfield the other day and this is my companion, Sarah so-and-so. Check, check out what happened next, though, or something like that. Like, just tease it a little bit. Give me a little something. So, I, if you're going to have silence and anticipation is building, 
unfortunately, you kind of you got to spoil it a little bit before you can build that anticipation. I know that's not the funnest form of storytelling, but it works and it works very, very well. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Um, I'm, I'm curious if the chat knows this. Like, chat, what's the most important thing uh, to make a short successful? Do you know? Well, let, let's see what people say. But you basically said it, but I, I want to hear from the chat. Like, what's the most important thing for a short to be successful? Let's see if people actually really uh, internalized it. But we can move to the next one. Um, or uh, Yeah, so we talked about challenge content we talked about shorts and engagement on shorts uh so i would say keep it up the more i i love this concept by the way top five funniest starfield mods i think this was like a good thumbnail it was nine days ago it's not taking off super well you could change the thumbnail a bit but you have the right idea like taking a, like i think that's nicholas cage like a popular face and putting it on a screen that's funny i get what the mod is i think maybe you could have delivered it a little bit better execution maybe fell flat a little bit but this is this is like exactly what I want to see from a gaming channel is trying different things, not just I'm gonna play a game today. So there we go. Um, all right, so I did see some comments, Alexi. Hook in the first second is one. I think that's that's the closest one to the right answer, because the other Looping? ones say like the three seconds. They they say three seconds, five seconds. Some people say hook. Some say a storytelling. I would say hook in the first second is the most accurate response. But I would almost say it's the first frame that's so important. Like you literally need to capture the attention in the first frame of the video. And if the first frame of the video is just you and a little bit of water, that's not engaging. I'm going to skip that, you know, immediately. Uh, unless I'm playing that game, of course, but, you know. Uh, so, yeah, first frame, guys. That's the, that's the solution to the riddle. That, that's your say. thumbnail. That's your title, that's your thumbnail. The first thing you say and the first frame they see, title, thumbnail. When it comes to shorts, it almost doesn't matter what you put in that title box. No one's reading that. What's the first thing that comes out of your mouth? What's the first thing people see? That's your title, thumbnail. All right, those are our pre-selected channels, which means it's time to move on to random selections. And we did it again, Alexi, halfway through the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Every, no matter what we do, uh, we so the, the next half of this live stream is going to be randomly selecting your channels. Again, the way it works is there's two forms down below. Fill them out because your channel could be next. We are going to pick those channels using the claw. The claw is a random number picker. If yeah, and I think, what was all uh, that? <laughs> I think for everyone in the chat, so you guys know in advance what's going to happen is when mm. we pick a channel and we take a look at that channel and the channel is just not very interesting to look at, we're going to skip it pretty quickly, right? We want to get through as many channels as possible, you know, maybe set a new record for channels picked <laughs> during a live yeah. stream. So uh, yeah, if, if we find a channel that's cool and interesting, we can learn something from it. Great, we'll take a look at it for two minutes. If we see a channel that's like, ah, come on, we already talked about these mistakes today. We're gonna just push forward, you know? No yeah. hard feelings. Maybe next time we'll take a look at it a little bit more in depth. Yeah, I know there are some of you here who've been submitting since the dawn of time. If you see your channel today and we move on quickly, just know that we feel the advice that we wanted to give you today has been said already. So I know that's not gonna work. I know people are still gonna get mad at us, Alexi. I'm worried yeah, about this. <laughs> I'll take the heat, guys. Feel free to get mad at me, you know. But again, two minutes is the limit we're going to give a channel anyway. And then, uh, yeah, let's just hope we find some interesting channels is what I'm hoping. So non-gaming channels coming in full swing today. 406 responses on the non-gaming forum. 297 gaming channels. What happened? They, we're doing a good job of gaming channels. I'm going to take this as a win. Uh, so we're going to bump the claw up to 406. We'll keep it. We'll do 407 in case someone just got in there. And then we will pick the first one. It's 371. 371. It's multi bulls. Their channel's about chess and Harry Potter. All right. Well, in promising combination. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. And, uh, okay. Okay. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay. Shorts. Shorts. They said shorts. Okay. So Just by them. looking at this, yeah. at the channel page, can you tell this is about chess and Harry Potter? So if we go to the home page, which is almost the same as going to the shorts tab, can we tell it's about chess and Harry Potter? Right here we can. If you scroll a little bit down, okay, fair. I almost was was gonna say we can't, we skip. 
<laughs> okay, cool. There is a little bit, but uh, yeah, let's see. What's how many videos? Two views, one view. When did when did this channel start? This channel started July uh, June twenty twenty three. A couple of months. So one one advice I'm gonna give, and we're gonna move on. More shorts. This is not enough. You've been on YouTube for a couple of months now. You have uploaded what uh, eight videos. This is not enough to trigger the the shorts thing. Right. Uh, and for everyone in the velocity. chat. Yeah. For everyone in the chat, YouTube Shorts is a little bit like a slot machine. And the more you pull, the more likely you're going to get a hit. Eight pulls in, in, in three months or four months now at this point, July, August, September, we're in October. Yeah, three months. Th eight pulls in three months is not enough. We're moving on. Let's go. Last That's piece it. of advice for me, no one's going to read this text. If I scroll to the short and Good see this point. text, I'm, I'm going to keep scrolling. All right. Good point. Next channel. We'll go with the gaming channel this time, but I do need to adjust the clock. 311 on the gaming side let's go ahead 244 244 uh let's place tutorials reviews 59 subscribers what do we have here cake ninja gaming um a little ninja kind of a cake as promised we have payday three which is having some some issues so they're giving a review and kind of alluding to what that is Armored Core 6, which is another popular game. Baldur's Gate 3. Um, I'm seeing the tutorial aspect in this channel pop up a little bit, but Alexi, I have one problem. It's just the thumbnails are so text heavy. I feel like they're yeah. really trying hard to over explain what's, what I'm supposed to get out of the thumbnail. Yeah, I feel like we already mentioned this in the previous channel. You know, thumbnails too busy. Fix the thumbnails first. And also, if we take a look at the banner here real quick. Like before we scroll to the videos, you see the banner. Okay, it's about gaming, let's place reviews, guides, walkthroughs. Uh, if this was just about one game, I would say yes. But if it's all that and then a bunch of different games on top of that, I feel like uh, you're trying to eat too much at once. You know, it's yeah. uh, is what I'm seeing. So yeah, let's move on. All right. We have, uh, I'm always having to update this, 4.30 now. And we will pick 147. I'm just waiting to type the number wrong. People hate when I do that. <laughs> Pokemon trading card game. All right. Pretty competitive space on YouTube. I almost wish we didn't get the channel focus spoiled because, again, I look at this banner. No way I can tell this about uh, cards. You know, I can tell it's about Pokemon, mm -hmm. but nothing tells me that this is about cards. The this is why I like again. having it spoiled because I, I <laughs> like I if I'm left to guess, I'm going to get it wrong. But yeah, now we know we're going to get it wrong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely banner not communicating the value. Just hold up some cards. I mean, you hold up cards. Great banner. Thumbnail. Something again. It's like same advice. Thumbnails. What are we seeing, Chet? Too much text. Too busy. Like the colors. Like it's not working. This is a, you can look at this uh, at the overall packaging, and you can tell this is a small channel, and that's the first mistake, the biggest mistake, the one mistake that's holding you from uh, becoming bigger. So fix mm -hmm. the thumbnails. Let's move on. Good concepts, execution on thumbnails needs work. Uh, gaming channels, you're at three twenty two. Let's update the claw. I'm I'm thinking at this point we're gonna like say better thumbnails all the time <laughs> because honestly that that's possibly one of the biggest problems of small channels. Like I should be able to click on a channel's page and not be able to tell how many subscribers this channel has by just looking at the thumbnails. Like that's yeah. the thing. Like if you surprise me and I say, "Wow, this doesn't look like a, a small channel." Uh, again, let, let's move. But this one again, twelve subscribers. The thumbnails say this uh, the full story. Overseer Roblox, like. You already have your name in the channel title. Why does it need to be featured in the channel banner? Uh, that's Roblox. That helps. That helps me to understand what the channel is about. But uh, Roblox, what you know, like something special. Need you need to come up with yeah. something that's going to get me interested in your channel. Uh, I will say the, the titles promise a lot, but the thumbnails don't deliver. How to get trash enjoyer badge? That's a tutorial. That's like uh, that's probably hard to get. But you, the trash enjoyer badge, I assume that that thing in the bottom corner is almost covered by the timestamp. And there's no there's no strategy in the thumbnail. There's no like I want to see a person jumping over a, a ravine, or I want to see something that implies what's going to help me get this badge, or or make the badge a larger focus of the thumbnail. 
thumbnail execution in this case, like great titles and concepts, thumbnail execution completely off. Good point then. Let's continue. Like again, what 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 can the what can the chat learn from a channel like that? I mean, the, in in terms of like positive examples, I would say a one positive you pointed out, which is fair. How to titles is a reasonable strategy to get you going. Okay, mm -hmm. in combination with the YouTube Shorts, even though I called YouTube Shorts cheating, I would not <laughs> say that uh, earlier. I would not say that you should not uh, do YouTube Shorts. Uh, do YouTube Shorts. You can. You should. You know. But when it comes to like uh, doing shorts for just for the subscriber's sake, you will know that your subscriber size is inflated, you know? So anyways, let's move on. How to titles is not a bad angle. Uh, I'll no. give the channel that. Not at all. All right, we're at 453 for non-gaming channels. All right, next one. I was trying to find some fun music to put in the background. We need, we need some like rapid fire music. 366. It is a shorts channel. They call themselves Shortays. AI humor is what they're telling us. All right. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> cursed AI or real photo. Okay. So uh, as promised, it does look like they're using AI and it does look like they're kind of making memes and jokes with their uh, AI shorts. Yeah, and I would say like the, at first glance, again because it's AI generated, it doesn't look too bad. Can we scroll just uh, at the, to the top just to see what's what's up with the banner? The banner is boring, you know. Like, what, what is this? Is this like a Photoshop type of tutorial uh, channel? Like, that's what the banner is communicating to me. Like, this is yeah. uh, graphic design, which is what the channel is not. So, uh, branding is off. But when you start looking at the at the thumbnails, I guess the um, the videos, the shorts do have like. A, reasonably well designed images, which is nowadays not difficult. Uh, I wish we could click on one of them just to hear the AI voice. Is it possible? It's music. So my problem with that is I have to read when the game takes a while to load and you th you're thinking about your life for a few seconds. Right. Do we? Can we find, can we click another one randomly just to see like what the AI voice is? So it definitely robot voice. Um, I mean, it's cool that the mouth is moving, right? So that yeah. that's already. I would say that that's an interesting take. Obviously, it's not unique these days. There are lots of tools out there that can make images move. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say, I, honestly, at this point, I would say this channel is the best channel we found so far from these quick fire audits in terms of like, uh, there is something interesting here. You know, channel like, focus. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. The, what but, I would say is that it's, I think I would keep playing around with different ideas uh, because, again, this is still like entry level stuff in terms of ideation. You know, a lot of people are probably tackling the side of AI. Can you just continue to innovate? Which is a big, big ask, but uh, something just to work on over time as, as you work to improve. All right. Uh, let's do one right. more and get back to super chats. Yep, was one more and then super chats, and then we'll right. continue with the rapid fire thing. So don't worry, yes. guys. We're yeah, still... don't worry. This isn't going anywhere. Uh, Three thirty-seven on the gaming form. Thirty-seven. Okay, early, 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 early. Thirty-seven. That's just seven. Thirty-seven. Oh my gosh, computer, you can't do that, man. Thirty-seven. <laughs> Do you see this? Every time I type it, 37, it just no. It's cursed. Okay. All right. They are they claim they're a live stream channel. This is gonna be interesting. Uh 8 bit goldie. Okay. It's quick banner check for me. Dream, believe, achieve. Uh doesn't I don't I have no idea what this channel is about. Dream, believe, achieve. Is this about motivation? Is this about, yeah, I don't know, chat. When you look at the banner, don't cheat, chat. Just look at the banner and tell me, can you tell what this channel is about? I can't. Yeah, I can't either. Uh, what I will say is that they have many, many subscribers. When I see channels like this, I always wonder, did they submit it or did someone submit it on their behalf? Um, I, you know, obviously we got a lot of views, good thumbnails, good titles. I don't feel like we need to spend a lot of time on this channel uh, because I don't see where they are faltering if they are the ones submitting on their own behalf 
I'm not sure what kind of advice they're looking for from us. And I would also say, I, I, I think this is where a beginner YouTubers are making the mistake. And, and this is what's causing uh, to make the mistake. They go to a channel like that. Maybe this channel inspired them to make content. They take a look at the overall packaging. They take a look at the banner and they see, oh, wow, he also has like three motivational phrases, his face, and that's good to go. Like as a small channel, you cannot copy a big channel when it comes to your channel packaging like that. Because a, a guy like someone like that who has established an audience, yeah, they can just uh, put their face on and people will know, you know, the people who watch this channel. Oh, yeah, that's him. And I know him, so uh, no, no more information is needed. But as a small be uh, beginner channel, you put your face on there or a gaming character and you put a couple of words. Again, I'm talking about channel banner specifically right now, not the, not the thumbnails. People won't know what, what your channel is about. Like, you know, they will not engage. Now, when it comes to these thumbnails, what you can learn from a channel like that is obviously these thumbnails are well produced, well designed. There's clearly a professional designer behind these thumbnails. I see this design style on Behance all the time. You know, like this is sort of sort of like professional level. So again, what's the takeaway for a small creator here? If I don't have the budget uh, to outsource my thumbnails, if I, I can't compete with something like that, is basically would be my takeaway to be honest. And it's pretty disappointing. Like it's pretty demotivating. If the only takeaway is oh. So to get my thumbnails better, I need to hire someone to do it. Uh, but I guess that's the reality of YouTube right now, that you're kind of competing against this type of creator uh, to some extent, who has like professional people designing for them. So uh, yeah, best of luck. I, I'm not convinced that this person was submitting on their own behalf, but so I've been wrong about that before. Uh, there are larger channels that submit sometimes and I have genuine questions. Uh, all right, we will move on to some super chats before coming back to randomly selected channels. And the first super chat we're going to look at is from Excalibur. You guys are great. Thank you for providing us info for our content. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate you. Evie Pulse, Alexi dropping some truth bombs today. Big truth bombs. Evie Pulse, thank you. Being a member for three months. Um, and I, I can't say your name. Uh, is shorts only channel not viable? Depends on your definition, I think. Uh, what's your goal? Are you trying to go full time? Because then, yes, it's not viable. <laughs> um, yeah, come depends on. What I, you're doing. I've looked at the uh, ratio. Like, if you want to make the same amount of money from YouTube Shorts as from a long form video, you need 200x more views. So, for every thousand views that you get on a long form video, you need 200,000 views on a short form video to get the same amount of money. And that, and by the way, I'm just talking about like the niche that vidIQ is in. So maybe for a gaming niche or you know motivation niche, it's, it's gonna be different. What I'm saying is, if you want to live off of shorts, uh, you probably need to like introduce other things like sponsorships, um, I don't know, uh, own products, personal community, something, because just shorts monetization, it's pennies, it's pennies. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got one here from Illustrated Finance and Economics. Thanks uh, for everything. 1,100 subs and shorts are working. Nice. Love to hear that. Congrats to you. Design Burst, always giving us supers and becoming a member. Thank you so much. Uh, is it advisable to create a template to speed up video production, like using the same text and effects, or does it limit the quality or creativity? I would I say it's fine. good. Yeah. Yeah, use templates. In fact, I, I, I would encourage people to use templates. It speeds up the process. Uh, it looks the it makes your content looks uh, look consistent across uh, multiple videos. You you can develop your own style, etc. So I think yeah, definitely use templates when when possible. Mm -hmm. We got a new member here in Doctor Voicenstein. Thank you, <laughs> good name. Uh, let's see, Old Man Gib gave us a super as well. Thank you. Uh, editing is an art form. For those of us that are not artists, can you recommend a few editing companies? Companies. I don't have any recommendations for companies. Like what I've seen people do is they use a website like Fiverr or Upwork to find editors. Uh, that's kind of the best strategy, I think, it, but it's still kind of a process as well. But you can definitely put out an advert and try and get some people who are, you know, editors to interview for a, for a position as your freelance editor. What I would say is that I know that I talked earlier about like, you got to get good at all these things, for example, but you only have to get good at a certain to a certain point. Like if you can put together a video competently enough to where you're you don't have any dead space in the video and, and stuff like that, like you don't have to be the best editor. You don't have to be the best thumbnail designer. It's all about like intent 
And it's if, if people are enjoying the story that you're telling, they'll forgive subpar editing, if that's what you want to call it. So you have to be good at this stuff, but you don't have to be the best at every single thing. You know, it helps. Sure. Yeah, that's great if you can hire a team. But yeah, that'd be my advice if you're looking to hire a team. Otherwise, just focus on getting better a little bit at a time. I'm curious if anyone in the chat has an editor working for them and how they found that person. Because mm -hmm. I feel like when it comes to editors and finding them, uh, there are lots of stories like uh, we for the vidIQ, one of the editors that we found for the vidIQ channel, I guess he's not an editor. At this point, he's like everything mm -hmm. from creator to designer to editor. But we found him through Discord, you know? So yeah. you can join Discord communities and ask around. It's more time consuming, of course, but I think that if you want to find that gem that you're looking for, that person that will transform your channel into something brand new and better for, let's say, for a reasonable amount of money. Because again, if you want to A-list editors, you know, who advertise their services on Twitter and stuff like that, they charge a ton of money for an edit. So it's like a small creator can't afford that. So if you want to find something within your budget, you just need to invest the time and energy. You need to go into those Discord communities, connect with people, make friends, maybe even say, hey, can you edit for me? And I'll, I'll give you a split cut of my uh, YouTube channel revenue or whatever, if like if the video goes uh, goes viral, you know, something like that. But yeah, I'm curious if people have editors working for them in the chat and, and how they found them. Because uh, right now what here... I'm seeing is they're, they're advertising their own services. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. Uh, time and place for it. Uh, C two one Q Z says, "I'll like a brutal roast." <laughs> I've been I've been noticing some comments, Alexi. They they do some people do find you pretty brutal. <laughs> I'm wondering. Hey, if that's, that's what where I'm for. Hey, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm watching these live streams as a viewer pretty much every single week, right? Yeah. And as a viewer, what I'm finding is that we need to move a little bit faster because, listen, guys. We can talk for eight minutes about a channel and, and and say the thumbnails are not great. Let's click on the video. Let's see what happens here. But uh, this, this, and that. and then at the end we will ask the chat, "What guys? What did you learn at the end of the this eight minute monologue?" And most people will say, "Well, their thumbnails were too red." You know. So if your main takeaway from our audits is that yeah, the thumbnails are bad, why not just say the thumbnails are bad and move on to the next example? You know. And that's what we are doing here. And again, I'm, I'll be the guy. Dan is the good guy. Dan wants to do longer things. <laughs> I'm, you know, it's me who's pushing Dan to just move forward. And again, I'm not here um, all the time, so bear with me. This is a, a rare do, occasion. We didn't properly introduce you. Alexi is one of our coaches and uh, also, I would say, analyst here at the at vidIQ. You've been with us for a long time. Uh, so, so we're like this new guy. <laughs> at least for me, Alexi's not not a new guy, but uh, does help a lot of channels and uh has a fantastic track record so hey listen some brutal honesty sometimes is some is exactly what some people need to hear uh we have one here uh, thank you for a super chat i use my shorts as teasers for my videos and it works well for me i'm boosting repeat traffic between uploads and community posts to stay connected well, sounds like a well-rounded channel that's awesome yeah especially Liz, with so the especially with the new feature where you can link stuff from shorts to your long form like yeah uh, that's that's good. It's good to hear that maybe that's also working for that creator as well. Lots of super chats coming in here. Uh, Garden and Worm Lady says, my worm farm slash breeding channel is will be a completely different channel for uh, for you all. <laughs> I'm a VidIQ member. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, I, I love to hear that. I've definitely not seen a channel like that before. So uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you. Rocket Queen, new member. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Enjoy your emotes. Uh, Milk Delivery Boy gave us a super appreciate you. Thank you so much. The Sam D says, word of mouth is best for finding editors, in my opinion. That's true. Uh, if you hang out in a lot of spaces, like if you start to get to know the other people who are in your niche, that's also yeah, a really good way to find people because everybody kind of talks and like just try to get into the communities that are really like similar to you. You know, don't look at those channels as like your competition that you need to crush. Look at them as potential colleagues and, and join their discords and try and like, you know, just get yourself out there a bit. Uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm at the right thing here. Any suggestions for a hook for vlogs with no script? I still think a vlog if, has to be about something. You know what I mean? I, I say if the person goes and films the vlog and then they're thinking what can be the hook, like if you had only one second, two seconds, three seconds to uh, to show the person like what happened, show that, you know, like you go on a trip, 
You come back. I have only three seconds to know what, or what happened. Show me that in the beginning. Spoil the whole thing if you have to. But it's better than, you know, having it towards the end. No one will watch it. And then, like, what's the point? Yeah. Um, definitely your vlogs, with even without a script, should have some kind of intent behind them. Like, who are they for? And uh, that's going to really play into what your hook is. I think vlogs themselves shouldn't be scripted, but you should have a plan. They should be about something. Um, my name, Jeff Gaming, says any specific affiliate programs you'd recommend. Um, I, I would say the Amazon affiliate program is a good My First Affiliate program to get into. And you can always focus on products that you actually use. And, uh, you know, everyone uses Amazon. Uh, that would be my suggestion. But, of course, if you're a gaming channel, there's tons out there that could be relevant to your audience. But really think about them first. Is it a product you're actually going to use and be able to promote in a trustworthy manner? And is it, yeah, is it a company you want to be promoting? Like, there's a lot that goes into it. Don't just pick anybody. Shrimply Canadian. Uh, thank you again for your super. I create a short every day and link some of them to my long-form videos that relate. I've noticed that my long-form uh, watch hours increase. Love that. I love that I was wrong about that because I I assumed when YouTube gave us that linking feature that people weren't really going to click that button from shorts. It seems to be working. That's great. Uh, JST Vibe says, if my content is political commentary with gameplay in the background, do I count as a gaming or non-gaming channel? Uh, we would give you a pass, I think. I'm very interested in the why gaming fits into that kind of commentary. I feel like you might be, it might be an audience mismatch personally, but uh, I, I would give you a pass. If you're not sure, just pick whichever form you think is the most logical. And then useless builds. We'll get back to random selected channels after the super chat. I learned so much more when you roast channels and no, you, we, we're not roasting my channel. Uh, but really, uh, did I make a mistake by using my original YouTube channel, 2008? I did private all of my old videos. So, okay, they had an old channel. They kind of relaunched it, got rid of their old stuff. Was that a mistake? Nah, it's not like it doesn't. Uh, the age of a channel doesn't matter whether it's uh, whether it was created in two thousand eight or yesterday. Doesn't matter. So yeah, that's the answer. Quick answer. Let's uh, the chat wants more audits. Let's give the chat more audits. All right. Well, they're gonna watch your head spin here. They're gonna go quick. So uh, we have. We'll go to non gaming. Uh, Four eighty three on the non gaming form. 347. Okay. 347. Growth uh, driver. All right. They want to achieve their goals in their 20s. I kind of get a sense of what they mean. Uh, all right. So they have 22 subscribers, 23 videos. And did they say long form videos? That's what we're going to focus on then. All right. So I am seeing some self help. Things like that. Uh, there's one big thing I'm noticing about this channel, Alexi. It is vagueness. I think that they are going the self-help route that is like general self-help for literally any person. And I think that a channel could thrive if they were to focus on a specific audience. So how to achieve more during your time in university? That's a very specific audience to me. Now we're talking about university students. Could we get more specific? What are some very common problems? Like achieve more during university is so broad. Like are there like different topics within that idea of achieving more where you can make a whole series about being more productive in college? Like what if you need to get a job while you're in college? That's got to take up a lot of your time. What kind of job should you get? How should you manage your time? Should you be making sure you get a job that has flexible hours? Can you tell your employer, I, I can only work 15 hours a week, I'm sorry. Like if any employer says no, then maybe the tip is to not work at that place. Like there's a lot of tips you can give, see what I mean, for very specific problems. But when you try and do this broad approach of like, I'm going to give advice to anybody about everything, you're not going to really get anyone specific watching your channel. That's my take, Alexa. Yeah, I, 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 I have to agree with the chat here. Someone said that uh, thumbnails don't feel personal. Uh, it feels like they are, you know, from a faceless channel. And uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely thumbnails are lacking. The one thumbnail that has a person featured in it is not good enough. The person is too small. The object in the background, I don't even know what that is. 
Uh, and I would say, yeah, definitely then I agree. The specificity of the topics is lacking here. It's way too broad. Maybe this creator is still experimenting because again, they've been doing this for what, two weeks and have like seven videos up. So maybe they're just throwing stuff at the wall, see which video picks up a little bit more traction and they'll like go in on all of that. Could be, we don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's a good takeaway for this channel and uh, we can proceed. All right. Uh, we will look at the gaming forum, which has 359 responses now. And we will see. We pick out 111. And by the way, the creator is in the yeah. chat as well. He just said that uh, he was thinking to start broad at first and then get more niche down. So yeah, makes sense then that they're still experimenting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I would say our general advice would be to start small and niche out. But uh, I, I would say like the smaller you start, the better personally, especially because I feel like this is still a huge topic, just this first video here. You could really dig into that in a lot of ways. Gaming Exploits, 37,000 subscribers. Hey, nice. Uh, we have uh, 18 hours ago, 7.5K views. This is going to be a tough one. What What are they... What's up? <laughs> what can we do for you? This is great. Can, this is really can strong. Can we check the banner real quick? Just, you know, I, I love the first impression. Every Friday, every what? Gaming exploits. <laughs> I, I, this is a dated banner, I feel like. They've got, the, they put this up, you know, when they were small and they never updated because, come on, like gaming exploits, I already see your name every Friday, every Saturday. I don't care. I just need to know what value you're going to bring to me. And right now I see a little bit that it's like uh, God of War and uh, the other game, what's it called? Uh, oh, Last of Us? Last of Us, exactly. Okay, that's cool. Uh, but obviously, when I st start scrolling down, I see Starfield, which is not wrong. Starfield is trending. If you were like a, a creator right now uh, trying to find footing on YouTube, yeah, jump on a trending game like Starfield or Baldur's Gate. I've seen small channels really do well uh, covering those topics. And I see Channel Focus, you know, they're doing Starfield stuff. Is, are they doing like tutorials? Yeah, best max styles. So they're doing like guides, patch updates. Guys, this is a good example of what you can learn, right? So channel focus is there. They're focusing mm -hmm. on a trending game, super important. They're focusing on updates and guides. Awesome, not just Let's Plays. Uh, in fact, can you find a single Let's Play in the last I couple of I think that's weeks? where the live streams come in, which is right. probably great. And you know what? I, I could talk about this too. Diablo 4, that's not Starfield. The live streams, you can get away with this kind of thing. If, if you're just trying to cater to your community, you can you can play something else for your live stream. Say, in fact, save that for your live stream if you want to play multiple games. Um, but even that, even even then, there, I think I bet we can find some Starfield here too, where it's just them hanging out. Yeah, this is just a good example. I feel like, you know, to, to reward channels like that, what we could do is we're going to pick another channel, obviously, right now in a second, but we'll leave this channel up in a, in a tab. So if we need to, we can go back and reference it, you know, in, just in case we come up uh, with another uh, gaming channel that, can, that could learn from this one. But yeah, it's a really good example. I think uh, this channel is doing well, except for the banner that needs an update. Yeah, banner let's, but, update let's move and, on. Yeah, well, we didn't give any advice. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think I this channel. Either. <laughs> this channel is doing great, and the the advice that's important is that the chat learns from this channel. You know, that's the advice that uh, that yeah. I'm uh, willing to give. You know, chat. You're look doing at great. This channel and learn. You're doing great, gaming exploits. Don't overthink it. That's my advice. Uh, all right, four ninety two yeah, on the non gaming form. We might check that. Just uh, check out this channel like in a in a month, and they will have will be like at hundred k already. Like that's how quick things can happen if you play a trending game like Starfield. So. Fact bites, short facts. They are doing shorts. I and I, I feel like we talked quite a bit about banners today. Like, what's a good banner? Is the question in the chat? Like, Dan, what's a good banner in your opinion? I love a good value proposition. What I don't love is promising a, a schedule of any kind. I am very anti schedule, and every year that goes by, I get more anti schedule. I want consistency. I want people to upload frequently, but. Sometimes when you have a schedule, you are ticking a box when you make that content and you're not thinking about, well, hang on, what can I do to make this video stand out? Maybe I can give this video an extra week of my time and plan it out a little bit better. But when, as soon as you promise a schedule on the front page of your channel, you start to hold yourself to that to a point where you burn out. I hate a promised schedule in the banner. Hate it. Never benefited anyone, in my opinion. If, you, if that's the motivation you need, that's great for you. I, I couldn't do it. And and what what are you uh, what are you gonna say to the naysayers who are saying banner doesn't matter because most people don't find your channel uh, yes. via homepage? Let's talk about that. We are a brand. 
And a lot of the advice we give to individual creators like yourselves is maybe you should also consider your channel a brand itself. This is for the future, okay? Yes, day one on YouTube, does your banner matter? Not really. I, in my opinion, Alexi, I don't think it matters at all. But as you grow and as you look for sponsors and you want people to take you seriously and you want to become maybe a full-time creator, this stuff, this little crap matters a lot. It just, just little PNGs that you put on your channel, that matters because people are going to be looking at all of it. S potential sponsors, you know, th this is all important stuff. But again, I, I feel if like you don't want to focus on it right now, then don't, but be thinking of the future. I, I feel like it's not just for the future, but also let's say I discover a video on the YouTube homepage. I like it, uh, I click it, and then I want to check out the channel. So I go to the channel page and I see it nothing, you know, or I don't know, like an empty space. Like, is this inviting for me? Does this communicate to me as a viewer? Wow, this creator cares about his channel. Like, I'm I'm going to be less likely to subscribe if you have a poor banner or no banner at all. Like this channel that we just, we are about to review. Doesn't have one. I'm about to, I'm about to skip this channel. Like this channel, come on. This is the type of channel that YouTube doesn't need more of, in my opinion. A facts, uh, probably AI generated, probably using Canva and ChatGPT in combination with images. And uh, listen, like the, the channels like that are dime a dozen. What, it, it's, a, it's not a viable strategy right now to grow. So in my opinion, we can straight up uh, skip. And mm -hmm. if this channel had a banner, I probably would have stayed five seconds longer looking at it. It's true. It, it does like, even though I, I do feel like this is, if you don't want to focus on this, you can ignore it for now, but that is true. I When I look at a channel and I'm thinking about subscribing, I mean, Rob pointed this out in a video. The subscribe button that's right here, it's right not right now because it's our channel, but when it's, you know the subscribe button, this is the one people click the most, it turns out, because they want to learn about you. Give them some information, you know? And for us, our value proposition is transform your passion into YouTube presence. That's That tells you a lot about us without saying subscribe or, you know, telling you how often we upload. We have an upload schedule, but we don't tell you what it is because we don't need to put that on the front page. It doesn't matter. You'll you'll learn what it is. And if we skip a day for some reason, we probably have a good reason for doing that. Maybe we're testing something. We don't need to hold ourselves to that. So yes, it does make you look more professional in every aspect. And uh, unfortunately for this channel, I mean, this this PNG here is a bit blurry. You know, it's, it just, it does make it seem like they they haven't quite yet taken the time to brand themselves in any meaningful way it makes it harder for us to click this button because we just don't we know so little about this channel and the person behind it all right uh we'll look at a gaming channel next i'm starting to lose track here uh 365 all right and we will pick 106 Yeah, and the chat is asking like what program um, to use for the banner. I would say Canva is pretty easy to use if you're non-techy. Uh, Adobe Express is also pretty easy to use. Um, so yeah, those two things. All right, so this one, exactly same mistake, banner, my name. Like it's like creators are in love with themselves. I don't care about your <laughs> channel name. I don't care about the face or the logo. You know, I want to get value from your channel. Right now the banner doesn't tell me, but at least you have one. So that's a, that's a start. <laughs> Let's take a look at the videos. I mean, I mean, it's really is that, you know, I think that if you, maybe that's a theory. I, may, I don't know, chat, if you agree or not, but a lot of people start a YouTube channel because they want to be seen, you know? And that's why they make those banners. They want to be seen, but they don't realize they need to provide value first. And that's how they get seen. Um, so yeah, I see some uh, Starfield stuff. I see, uh, first of all, uh, we have the advantage that I actually understand this language. So oh, it's perfect. French. Okay, good. And, but uh, honestly, because the chat doesn't understand the language, I want to make it a rule when I am on this live stream, if it's a foreign language channel, we just skip it. Uh, but or. At least we don't focus on the titles. The thumbnails, they jump from Starfield. They they were doing Call, Call of Duty before that. Channel focus, non-existent. Uh, maybe they're like putting their axe into the Starfield basket right now. Maybe it will uh -huh. work out for them uh, down the line. Uh, they started two months ago. Looks like, what's the channel age uh, then in the about section? Yeah, it's oh, a fresh you. channel. Okay, okay, wow. okay, okay. So this is like relatively yeah. new channel. I think, listen, guys, what this creator has realized pretty quickly is that Starfield is hot, right? And uh, their first Starfield video got 1. Point, what 1.5K views, uh, even more. Is it like... Uh, yeah, 1.8. 1.8, yeah. 
so there you have it. You know, you just switched the game to something that's more popular. And now the next, the follow up video got 2.7K. 5.1K. Uh, oh, sorry, man. My eyes are just uh, going wild right now. So, yeah, but that's the that, that's the good thing. So take everything I said and, and, and with a grain of salt in terms of like, you know, banner, this, this. But what I, I, I just want to praise this creator right now because I'm being, you know, a little bit critical here and there looking at the channels. But this is a good example of a creator, a new creator, or a new channel at least, realized pretty fast, wow, Starfield got me 1,000 views, 2,000 views. That's what I'm going to focus on. And they're doing exactly that, and that's the strategy. You find a winner, you double down on it. Great. Let's. let's One thing on. I want to say, I want to point out, the simplicity of these top row thumbnails here, fantastic. You don't, again, you don't have to be the best graphic designer in the world to communicate a clear message. And I know I can't read the language, but a lot of people can, and it's resonating with them. I think they're talking about secrets that are in books in this game. Like when it comes to Bethesda games, there's always a lot of lore hidden in like scrolls and books and stuff. And yeah, like look at that. Look, the perspective is great. The little arrow pointing at the little book, like this, this can work. You don't, this is a screenshot from the game with some text and an arrow. And if it's done well enough, that can work for a thumbnail. You don't have to be a genius graphic designer. It's all about communicating a clear message. Yeah, I remember someone saying, someone very smart who started like 10, 20 channels uh, at some point. And we can, by the way, we can move on. We can look, uh, start finding another one. I'll just say this one. And that person said, for thumbnails, you don't need to be a great graphic designer. You just need to, like a lot of times when you're looking for a thumbnail designer, they will be great designers, but they're actually not that great in, in coming up with concepts for those thumbnails, you know? So it's really the concepts that matter. And sometimes the concept can be as simple as find a screenshot from the game, point an arrow to something, put some text in yellow and white, and that's it. That's your thumbnail. And sometimes that will work better than five, seven elements uh, squeezed into one which thankfully this channel is not doing, uh, but I feel like this channel is doing the opposite. It's 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 still like not enough. Like I, I look at the first two thumbnails and uh, I mean, I guess I, okay, okay, I'll, I'll take up, uh, I'll take it back. I guess for this niche, you do want to uh, show the, what, what is it? Like the final product? Is, it, is this what they're doing? I, I think so. It's hard. I'm still like, is it like stop motion? Is it? just cool builds i'm not really clear okay hashtag stop motion so that tells all me right. some of these at least are stop motion all right i mean what's the banner real quick i'm uh rogue bricks yeah not good enough banner uh, is again same mistake uh thumbnails uh when i look at the thumbnails they the text is again nowadays guys and, I, and I'm speaking specifically to the chat, and I'm, I'm, and I'm hoping the person who submitted this channel is also in the chat. Um, nowadays, you have Canva. You have Adobe Express. You have all these free tools. You don't have to make these simple, cheap-looking fonts. You know, you have all the tools. You don't have to be a graphic designer to come up with something that looks reasonably appealing. These thumbnails look too simple. Um, to point, uh, they, they are not competitive is what I'm saying. Like mm -hmm. the, if you start comparing these thumbnails to other thumbnails from the same niche, they're not competing, competitive. And if they are not competitive, you're not getting the views. What's the most popular video from this channel? Let's just see if they had at least a little bit of success. 274 views on I went to Star Wars filming locations from A New Hope. Yeah, which is completely irrelevant to the channel focus. But to be fair, I see like two years ago. So maybe this is a pretty young creator too, right? So there's like still a lot of uh, room to grow, et cetera. Not mm -hmm. saying that uh all the creators can can learn but um yeah if you're out there pick up canva the, the free account you don't need the fancy stuff and uh just make better fonts at least you know and, and that will be already one percent improvement five percent improvement there is one thing i want to like just point out as a as an example of how i would have done a, a certain thumbnail vader force push i think is like a stop motion concept is pretty fun but you have way too much negative space. I want Vader taking up half the thumbnail, and I want the person being force pushed taking up half the thumbnail. But what you do is you take that person, you put them at a, an angle like they're being pushed back, and then I want you to put some like lines making it look like just giving that that visual in the thumbnail that it's they're being pushed. That alone again communicates the title without needing to read the title. And also hashtags in your title does nothing. Don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Then let's move on. All right. Next channel. Now I love the fact that you can redesign the concept on the fly here for a 
stop motion channel, just like that. <laughs> so that's good. Sometimes when it's not my own stuff, it's easy to just look at something and go, I have an idea for that. Uh, 372 now on the gaming forum. And, and someone in the chat is asking, like, is this a thumbnail stream? I guess to a point, mm -hmm. listen, like, I'm, I'm going to ask the chat, what's the, how important are the thumbnails in terms of like percentages? Like, how much percent would you give a thumbnail when it comes to like, is thumbnail contributing 10% to a video success, 20% to a video success, 40%, 60, 80? I don't know. Tell me. Uh, we can do a poll. How important? Yeah, that would be. I mean, I don't know. Maybe too many numbers. Then I just want the chat to see it, like uh, thumbnails. So, like, I'll just do really quick. Ten percent important. Thirty percent important. Uh, we'll do fifty percent important, and we'll do maybe ninety percent important. I don't think any, I don't think one hundred percent would even need to go in there. I agree. Yeah, one hundred percent. Rough and tumble poll. JJ the Fulf. Uh, so. We got their banner here. We got like so matching branding at least. 234 subscribers, 200 videos. Um, they've been around since 2018. And we have what? I see Half-Life 2. I'm having to look at the titles. Uh Half-Life 2. I hate something. I don't I don't play a lot of Half-Life. Um, thanking us for 200 subscribers. There you go. Uh, this made me hate the gnome. Okay, Half Life. The only reason I know it's Half Life Two is because they've they've put the really really thin Half Life Two logo in all the thumbnails, or Left for Dead, for example. So, a couple mm -hmm. of things I'm noticing, Alexi. Really old game. On the surface, when I look at these thumbnails, sorry, difficult for me to suss out what they're doing. I have to look very very hard, and you know why? It's because of this character here. I know this represents you as the creator. The problem is your character's vibrancy is up here, and the rest of the thumbnail image is down here. I'm talking about brightness. Just just the overall, like your character takes over all of the senses. And I don't know that this is even a gaming channel when I look at these thumbnails. And that is holding you back. People need to understand what your video is about. And that's the reason we focus on thumbnails so much. Let me show you something. Click the homepage. What's the first thing you notice about all of these? Thumbnail, 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 thumbnail. Because you're not just, you're not looking for tiny white bits of text. You're looking for a visual stimulant to get you interested in the video. That's the first step to getting someone to click on your video is that visual stimulant. Ooh, lots of colors. What's that? Oh, uh, okay. Something about Panda Express. Like, and then maybe you'll read the title, learn more. You know what I mean? YouTube's AI tools. Like, okay. Like I'm getting a lot of the thumbnail. It's, the text is easy to read. There's two faces on it. I recognize the faces on certain thumbnails because this is my niche. So I might click on this video and watch Renee explain these tools. So again, that's why we talk about thumbnails so much and the channel we were just looking at. My eyes are scrambled. And the sooner you learn that, the sooner it can change. Yeah, let's let's continue. All right. Uh, we have 509 on the non-gaming forum now. Lots of you submitting your channels. 251. All right. The Brick Cruncher. That sounds painful. Lego channel, though. Second Lego, Lego channel of the day. What's the first thing we're seeing, everybody, in, in chat? First thing you notice. I know what Alexi's noticing. Uh, they're going to take too long to answer. You can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, listen. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Lego guides... I mean, this is good. This is a, this is a start, you know. Uh, right now, I'm not even talking like about design decisions, where to place the text, should be in the middle, should be on the right, left, etc. Uh, I think that because they're saying buyer's guide, that's interesting, collecting reviews, analysis, and I can see that, that it's Lego related, uh, this is a reasonable uh, banner, okay? It makes me feel like this creator cares about their channel. Now, when I start looking at the thumbnails, same mistake. If I start counting the elements, uh, it just feels too much, you know? Uh, I think that the text feels overwhelming. Like imagine uh, the thumbnail, I wish I could draw, but the second row, the second thumbnail from the right, this one. Uh, so second row, second thumbnail from this one, right? Imagine this thumbnail didn't have text on it at all. It was just the character, and I guess it's what, the box or yeah, the magazine? The magazine. Uh, that would almost make the thumbnail better than it actually is in my opinion. So 
that's a simple, I, I guess that's a genius uh, trick you can do, guys uh, and gals, everyone. Uh, you can make a thumbnail better by removing a couple of things from it. And in this case, uh, I would probably remove the text and let the title do the talking instead. You know, if like that would be my first um, piece of advice. But of course, like the green, the toxic green background color. I mean, yeah, it, it does stand out, I guess, in certain contexts, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I, I will say you did pick their top performing video. <laughs> However, I do feel like it could have gotten more views with your suggestions. And I feel like if you're going to be reviewing a specific thing, that's a great time to put yourself in the thumbnail and maybe give a facial expression of some kind that alludes to what you feel like, you know, this magazine is doing right or wrong. Maybe it's the magazine here and you just pointing like this. It feels like overdone. There's too many elements. We got the stormtrooper. We got a thing in the middle and a magazine on the left. And then we have text that's really, really hard to read. You've put black text with a yellow border on a bright green thumbnail. And my eyes don't want to look at it. I don't even want to know what it says because it just my brain is telling me, nah, that's not anything. That's just pixels. You know, I my favorite is this right here. It's white text, black stroke. It always stands out, tried and true. And uh, I know that you've kind of branded your thumbnails with this green background. But when I think Lego, I don't think stark backgrounds. I think like vibrant colors. Like Lego is like a universe, you know, there's, there's a lot there. So I want to see like maybe a blurred out background of like a, a Lego city or something. And it should always be changing too. There should, it should be relevant to what's going on in the foreground and not overpowering either. Yeah. Yeah. The chat also got the message. They all agree with you, Dan. Let's move on. All right. Uh, I'm looking at the gaming channel, which is 380 now on that form. Two six nine. Claw still favoring a certain area of the form. The Lion MC with 104 subscribers. They do Minecraft SMP videos. All right. Congrats on getting over 100 subscribers, by the way, with uh, less than 50 videos in the Minecraft space. That could be very tough to do. Uh, and I'm liking the simple thumbnails. The only thing I'm not liking are the concepts for the videos. Hidden SMP, I, as a Minecraft player, a former Minecraft player, I should say, I understand that hidden SMP is probably a specific Minecraft server, and it says join this crazy Minecraft SMP now. So they're trying to get people to join a Minecraft server. That's not very exciting. You know, uh, for a Minecraft channel, I really think that that should be like an advert in a longer form video where you're doing a specific challenge or something. If you are a Minecraft channel, I'm going to pick on Minecraft channels specifically for a minute. Nobody in the community, relatively speaking, probably knows what hidden SMP is. There are too many niche SMPs out there. What you need to do is focus on an idea for that specific video. And when people get into the video, they can learn this is actually taking place on a specific Minecraft server. And then you can talk about that Minecraft server later in the video. But it doesn't, the average Minecraft viewer will watch your content if they feel like it's for them. But when I see hidden SMP, you've already, boom, you've cut out so many people because they're like, I don't know what that is. That's not for me. You, you gotta be a little more open to non hidden SMP people watching your videos. Maybe they don't want to join another server. Maybe they're a part of too many as it is. Does that mean your content is not relevant to them? I would say, no, you, you probably feel like anyone could watch it. Don't be exclusionary. I know you're not thinking about it. Like you're excluding anybody, but the average viewer who sees this is going to be like hidden SMP. I don't, I'm not part of that. That's not for me. I'm not in that community. What is happening in the video? Is it a hundred days challenge? Are you trying to beat some kind of record? Like what is happening in the video? There's a lot of like apply now, apply now, apply now. No, do that in a longer form video. Like give, give people a reason. Why should I apply? What, what's going to happen on this SMP? What, what, why? Then for someone show people who how fun it is. Uh, yeah, uh, so I just wanted to say, for someone who doesn't play Minecraft, which is me, uh, what can I learn from this channel? Anybody who is, I guess, part of a club, I, let's call it that, because it's a Minecraft server, it's a community, you, you got to show, if you want people to join your club, subscribe to your channel, whatever it is, you got to show people why it's a fun place to be. And that's where the awesome concepts for your videos come into play. Don't just tell me to join your club. Don't just tell me to subscribe to your channel. 
why what's what happens in this place it's just like a double subscribe right like it's not only i want you to watch my videos i also in your free time want you to play on my minecraft server you're asking a lot from a viewer you're trying to take a lot of their time and that's hard enough to get people to even subscribe to youtube channel in the first place you are going an extra layer here trying to get people to join your server why should i even join your channel what's what's going to happen here in this place i'm sure it's fun but you're not giving me that and you have some of that the quest for the rarest item I can see that's the dragon egg, but I mean, the average, uh, I, I mean, I, I, that's how much of a nerd I am, but it's just a black thing with purple specs to most people. Like, why is the lighting like that? The dragon it egg is can be put me. anywhere. It is for me. Yeah. What, put it in a house or something with lighting. You know what I mean? Um, why Minecraft SMPs are failing. That's, that's could be a documentary that, that actually is a really interesting idea. 15 minutes. This, this seems like a good in-depth video. Hey, it got a lot of views. That's great. So those videos that you are doing when you are giving more value are working, but I, I think it's really, really important to try to not worry so much. Don't, don't put this logo in the thumbnails. It doesn't matter what's happening in the videos. Don't make it seem like an exclusive club. You want lots of people to watch your channel. Don't make it seem like it's too exclusive for them. They shouldn't be here because they wouldn't understand anyway. Good point. Let's continue. I know that's like the video with the most views too, but I think it's because of like small content creator. Like they're, they're, they are appealing to a specific audience, but this is not going to get people to subscribe to their channel. You know what I mean? I still need, I need more like this. Keep at it though. I, I know I went kind of negative there, but seriously, keep at it. This is, this is for eight videos. Really good progress. 515. Yeah. We're getting through a lot of channels today. And that's great. That was always my dream to get as many as possible. All right. Charles tutorials. They want to help How do I find trending topics? I'm going to answer this real quick then. I, we actually, that's a, maybe a, an occasion for us to plug oh. our vidIQ tool if we can, because we actually it have is. a whole section. Sorry. I want to make sure this person follow the rules. Are you gaming channel? No. Oh, it's about, okay. They have one video. It's about growing it. Okay. Got it. Never mind. We'll come back to this. Okay. Yeah. You we're going to show you a uh, vidIQ trending tool like, exactly because i think uh, today's live stream in today's live stream we mentioned quite a uh, quite a few times that jumping on trending topics trending games uh etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, is a good idea and uh, our keyword tool uh, then if you go to keywords and then you see a rising keywords there uh, which has like the new thing and that thing gives you all the rising keywords and you can also go to topics it's right there uh near search volume at the above search volume Wait, uh, which, I wish I could draw on the screen. I know. So sorry, but yeah, you almost you're so close. Oh, then okay. there, it, it. just a little bit higher. The topics. Oh yeah, and there you have a ton of topics oh, wow. you can scroll from from Roblox to Minecraft to whatever game you're playing. I I don't guarantee that your specific game will be there, but there are a ton of topics here you can scroll through. And then for every topic, you can uh, you see what's trending this month, this week, today. And if you check this periodically. Uh, you might stumble upon something that's worth making a video about, you know? So that's uh, that's our VidIQ plug of the day. So there you go. Looking for trends? Play around with this. App.vidIQ.com. If you have a VidIQ account, it should come right up. So Charles Tutorials, uh, you want to help people grow their YouTube channels quickly, which I love. Um, how to get your first subscriber on YouTube. Here's the problem, Charles Tutorials. A lot of people here. In fact, here, show of hands, everybody, because th this is our Charles. We're right there with you. How many of you have Minecraft channels? Ray, give us a little Minecraft specifically. Give us a little raise hand emoji, because I would venture to guess that most people here do not. And we spend a lot of time on them because a good handful of our audience does. But this to me, I almost skipped you because I thought you were a gaming channel. You your avatar, if you're going to be in this space, should not be a Minecraft character. If you want to grow gaming channels specifically, then there's more wiggle room there. But a lot of people who are watching this live stream are not Minecraft YouTubers. And in fact, I know this happens. A lot of them tune out when we look at a Minecraft channel and I start to get riled up about one. They shouldn't because I still feel like there's relevant tidbits of information in there for everybody. Doesn't matter. They feel like they're not looking at a channel that reflects what they do on YouTube. And that's why a lot of our videos don't look like this. So that's my advice to Charles. Good advice. Well, let's find another channel. I will look at a gaming channel this time. 392. And 
and it's going to be 315. All right. And I also love some of the insight here from the chat. So again, uh, we said multiple times today, a trans, trans, trans. Uh, but someone also says that they had success uh, focusing on games um, that aren't covered a ton by people. So they have a solid player base, but there is a little bit of a lack of content on YouTube about it. And one might think, wait a second, is this possible? Like YouTube has so many videos. Do those games exist, which uh, are being played uh, even to this day, but videos are not made about those games? And yes, the answer is those uh, niches exist. We've made some videos about it on the VidIQ channel. Like uh, not so long ago, we made a video about a channel which got 100,000 views about a game called Wing Commander. I'm sure nobody in the chat knows what Wing Commander is unless you were born in the 80s. Uh, and uh, yeah, that channel. Imagine getting 100,000 views on your first video, making content about a super obscure game. And the reason why it worked is because nobody was covering this game, at least not in the way that creator did it. So yes, trance is great, but also jumping just on underserved niches or communities and making content for them is also a valid strategy. Mm -hmm. Looking at this gaming channel, uh, a few things I noticed right away. You are overthinking your thumbnails. There are too many elements in your thumbnails. You can use some text, but I mean, text, 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 text. It's all very tiny, hard to read. And then to make matters worse, all of the images you're using are very blurry. I don't know what's going on. And it makes it hard to even want to read the titles because I'm just not getting the value from the thumbnail. And I know we've talked about thumbnails a lot today. It is the number one thing we we notice as people who might click on your video for the first time, right? So that's what I'm going to say yeah. about this channel. Got to move on. Unfortunately, this is channel like same mistakes so we got a member for two months here thanks for these reviews i'm almost a thousand subs thank you for being a member and congrats congrats on thousand subs uh hopefully you have an uh, an awesome celebration when you hit a thousand subs uh rocket queen says in my opinion your introduction on youtube is very important but a lot of people don't read them meaning like the banner i assume which is true a lot of people don't read them but the people who do you want something there for them it's true List is me. Uh, welcome back to uh, the Super Chat table. Uh, I am a new member, but I didn't get a shout out. Did I miss your... There's a chance I didn't come through. I apologize. But hey, thank you for being a member. Enjoy your emotes. I'm sorry that we missed your initial membership joining. Uh, sometimes it, it, things get lost, doesn't pop up. But thank you for, for being here. And Goat Daddy and the fam, uh, fam says, I've watched a few of these streams and I haven't seen a channel audit about funny family channels like mine my channel has done well this far but would y'all consider that a niche that niche a small one i wouldn't no. consider it a niche really i i almost think like there are a ton of huge channels where it's like family style vlogs funny family so uh it's just that those channels are so successful they don't submit for an audit that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> i i don't feel like it's a niche i feel like like funny family channel is like a lot of people can be on be on camera and do a funny thing but i don't know if that count does that count as a niche it's what is what is the niche like i i originally i keep thinking your name says farm so i'm just gonna because it's goat daddy and the fam maybe there's maybe you're live on a farm let's just hypothetically speaking i feel like that is more like homesteading content vlog content and i start to get to know you and your family members because of the things going on in that location right so i feel like it needs to be a little stronger than oh we're a funny family i i like okay but as a funny family what do you do do you do challenges together do you do you homestead do you, like what what's the like i think the family part is what makes it unique because a lot of people might do that solo but it needs a little something more you know what i mean i'm just missing that like that little extra bit of like okay what as a funny family do you do what makes it a funny family and and can you do whatever that is consistently Without looking at the channel, I, I, that's my take. Before we move to the next super, I, I, we can move. But I, I, I'm curious. Then, do you feel like we reviewed more gaming channels today than non-gaming? Because I feel like Possibly. people in the chat get the impression. Because remember, we just reviewed a few sec, uh, a few minutes ago, a channel about YouTube education. But because they had a Minecraft character in the thumbnail and banner, it feels like it's a gaming channel, but it's not. Right. So I feel like we are trying to keep up the balance, but. Sometimes because of the way the channel is designed, it feels like, yeah, we are leaning more into gaming stuff. I don't want people to be afraid when they see a channel that doesn't look like theirs on the stream. Like if it were up to me, 
you know, it, I I wouldn't I wouldn't do the two separate forums. I would do one. But we did so many gaming channels back in the day that we separated the forums because we know that was like a common complaint. I believe that what works on one channel may yeah every channel is unique but when we say like the thumbnails aren't great just because it's a gaming channel doesn't mean you should tune out like look at the thumbnails why are we saying that like and and what are your thumbnails doing that you know maybe similar what mistakes is that gaming channel making that your channel could be making like i know it's difficult to do we uh, look i would love to see more channels like mine when i'm looking for advice but it, it's a it's a free live stream that goes on for two hours a week and we can only do so much. <laughs> so doing our best, hopefully. And I know there's people out there who take notes on these things. They're not even talking in chat because they're too busy writing. Hopefully there's some value, even if the channel doesn't look like yours. Yeah, I, I do wish. Honestly, I, I do wish we we have found more lifestyle channels today. You know, yeah, lifestyle channels. Mm -hmm. I, I do like seeing real people, you know, and not just like 3D characters or AI talking. AI etc. avatars. and yeah, yeah, and I mean, listen, like, we could pre-select more channels, but then we have the opposite problem. Now there's a large portion of our audience who doesn't want that. They want their chance to be on the screen. So if we we have to find a balance, but this is why we have coaching programs. This is like, if you're looking for that extra bits of uh, those bits of advice, I would start at VidIQ Max. We have a discount that's linked down below in these streams and you can get like, you're not going to get one-on-one -on -one channel audits, but what you can get is a community full of creators who are taking YouTube super, super serious and regular group coaching calls that go into very specific deep dives on very specific YouTube topics. So there are those levels of education, but when you're looking for free advice, you know, sometimes it's not going to go as smoothly for you as you might want it to. And that's not because we don't like you. It's because there's a lot of people to get to. We have a new member, Tiffany's. Is that Epiphany? <laughs> I don't see that word spelled out too much. It's a great name, though. Uh, thank you for being a YouTube member. And those are all of our supers. And those are all of our channels. You made it. All right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no no savage uh, goodbyes today. <laughs> no. Uh, and then Shrimply Canadian just did a super. Uh, 1,100 subs in four and a half months because of FedEx's tools. One thing I do think... One thing I do is I shrink my thumbnails to 200 to, by uh, basically really small to see if my text and image is still clear. Great, great strategy. And there's there's websites out there that'll do that for you as well. Um, it's really good. Exactly. I think uh, when we are designing thumbnails, one word I uh, mention a lot is can you zoom out a little bit? Can you zoom out a little bit? Can you yeah. zoom out some more? Because yep. <laughs> it's super important to zoom out on thumbnails to see does it still make sense when it's super, super small. So great tip here. And then action. Fantastic. Thank you for becoming a YouTube member. Enjoy your emotes. All right. Now stop it. Stop giving us money. We have to go. Um, thank you all for being here. And if you're at Vid Summit, stay safe. Uh, you know, go go find Rob and them and say hello. And uh, yeah. Oh, L Roop Vlogs. Thank you for becoming a member. Okay. Stop giving us money now. S stop it. I'm tired. I'm just trying to find the outro. If anyone gives me any more money, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to just going to move on. Do you have any final thoughts while you're looking for the outro? I mean, my final thoughts is that I appreciate the chat. I think that there's even just reading the chat, because I was kind of reading the chat a lot today, there's a lot of good stuff in there. You know, like, uh, by the way, for example, I found that piece of trivia. Did you know the guy who made Wing Commander also made Star Citizen? I didn't know that. Someone I didn't know that. Wow. That's a cool piece of trivia. So, yeah, chat, you, you, I love you. So, that, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We will see you next time.